NFL captains of Michigan, Guy Murdoch and Frank Gussing, both playing their final game here at Michigan Stadium this afternoon, have met at midfield with the co-captains of Ohio State, Harry Howard and Rick Galbus. And the flip of the coin was won by Michigan. They have elected to receive, and Ohio State will kick off and defend the south end where they will have the benefit of a 13-mile-an-hour wind to their backs to open this ball game. So now let's run down the offense for Michigan as they will take the field to start this 67th meeting between Ohio State and Michigan. At split end will be Bo Rather, the junior from Sandusky, Ohio, 6'1", 180. At quick tackle will be Jim Coode. Coode, a junior, also an Ohio product from Mayfield, Ohio, 6'3 and a half, 235. Coode, of course, has been suffering from an injury, a shoulder injury. Should he not start, should he not be able to go, Tom Poplowski will be there to start for him. 6'4", 225 pound junior from Warren, Michigan. All indications now are that Coode will be able to start. At left guard, the All-American candidate from Highland Park, Michigan, Reggie McKenzie, 6'4", 232 and a senior. At center, one of the great centers that Michigan has known, Guy Murdoch, a senior, 6'2", 210 from Barrington, Illinois. And here come the Wolverines onto the field and you can hear the reception. At right guard will be Tom Coyle, a junior, 233, six foot from Chicago, Illinois. At the strong side tackle will be Curtis Tucker, the sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio, 6'1", 243. At tight end will be Paul Seymour, a junior, 6'5", 231 from Royal Oak. And along with him at tight end, when two tight ends are employed, will be Paul Seal, the sophomore from Detroit, 6'6", 213. Starting at quarterback for Michigan will be Tom Slade. The sensational Saginaw sophomore, 6'1", 198, and what a job he has done in directing this Michigan team since coming on as a starter against Michigan State. In the backfield, the wingback will be Glenn Dowdy, a senior, 6'2", 204 from Detroit. The fullback will be Ed Shuttlesworth, Cincinnati, Ohio sophomore, 235, 6'2". And the tailback will be Billy Taylor, the greatest career rusher in Michigan history. 5'11", senior from Barbington, Ohio. Billy going into today's game with 2,872 yards to his credit as a Michigan runner. On defense now for Ohio State. At the ends will be Rich Capital, a senior, 200 from Dover, Ohio, and Ken Lutner, a senior, 206 from Medina, Ohio. At the tackles will be George Hassanall, 256-pound junior from Garfield Heights, and Don Cotillo, 230, a sophomore from Amityville, New York. The middle guard is Vic Cagle, sophomore, Cincinnati, 205. The linebacker, Stan White, and he's a great one. Ken Ohio Sr., 226. And Randy Grandishar, a sophomore, 224 from Warren. The cornerback will be co-captain Harry Howard, a senior from Cincinnati. And the deep men, Tom Campana, a senior from Kent. Jeff Davis, a sophomore from Erie, Pennsylvania. And Rick Seifert, a junior from Cuyahoga Falls. Kicking off now for Ohio State will be Stan White. Deep for Michigan. Bo Rather is standing on his goal line. Billy Taylor and Glenn Dowdy are up at the five. And we're just about ready to get this one underway. Here's the ball in the air, and here we go. The sailing kick coming to Dowdy at the 11. Up to the 15, he goes 20. Trying to swing right at the 25, but he's pulled down right at the 25-yard line by Rick Seifert, who got down there in a hurry to nail him. So Michigan will put the ball in play first and 10, just shy of their own 25-yard line. That'll be interesting to see now. Michigan, they've liked to go to the short side all year long. Whether or not they pick on Campbell over there, uh, who, as we mentioned, is taking the place of Tom uh, Morant, who is out with that operation. They may go right over there in a hurry. They're strong to the left, working out of the eye formation. Both ends tight. Seal and Seymour are both in the lineup, and the handoff is given off to Ed Shuttlesworth, and the big fellow from Cincinnati plows his way up over the left side to about the 29-yard line where Rick Seifert, first in there to make the tackle from his safety position. The officials for today's game, Jerry Markbright is the referee, umpire is Russ Kumper, headlinesman Dale Orem, field judge Lou Lehman, backfield judge is Bill Quimbley. A pickup of four, second down and six yards to go. This time they're strong to the right side. That's the wide side of the field. The pitch out goes to Taylor and he's around that side, but he is hit in the backfield at about the 25-yard line by George Asinol. The big left side tackle from Garfield Heights. Tremendous effort. He bombed through and nailed Taylor before the play could really develop. Actually, Taylor was still handling the football when he was hit, Tom. He, he uh, could have been in a lot of trouble. So that loss will move it back to the 26-yard line of the market, and it's third down and nine yards to go. This is a passing situation. Slade hit on some key third-down passes last week. 
against Purdue. He's sending rather wide to the left side, the only wide receiver. And back to pass goes Slade. Getting the time to throw. Runs out of the pocket now. He's going to run with the football. The 25 and the 30 swings wide, and he is knocked spinning at the 32-yard line. He's short of a first down. Harry Howard coming up quickly from his cornerback position to make the tackle on Tom Slade. Finding everybody covered, he ran out of the pocket and has stopped a couple of yards short of a first down. Slade was hit very, very hard on that. You don't like to see a quarterback get too loose out there. Ohio State really racked him, and uh, we'll watch him on the sideline. Barry Datsauer checking into the lineup now to do the punting for Michigan. He ranks fourth in Big Ten statistics, uh, 39.8. Here comes his punt. He sails one out of this time into the wind. Back is Campana, who grabs it at the 23, comes to the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40, the 45, the 50. He may break it. The 40, the 35, and he's pulled down by Billy Taylor on the Michigan 25-yard line. Quickly now, let's run down this Ohio State offense for you. At the tight end will be Rick Middleton. The strong, the uh, split end is Jimmy Harris. The tackles are Milan Bukanski and Rick Simon. The guards are Jim Cragle and Chuck Monica. The center is Tom Dixon. The quarterback is Don Lemka. The running backs are Elmer Lippert and Rick Galbos. And the split end is Dick Wakefield, the flanker, we should say. A 50-yard run back by Campana giving Ohio State. First down, they mark it at the 28 of Michigan. Wakefield split left, and the handoff is given off to Galbos, and he runs it over the 25, down to about the 23-yard line. Tom, I was going to mention, and no need to uh, introduce the Michigan defense man by man because they'll all be in on the first two tackles anyhow. <laughs> and uh, we saw a tremendous defensive effort by Ohio State. And, of course, Campana, he is one of the finest backs in the country. There's no question about that. He can break a ball game wide open. But this Michigan defense, of course, has been superb all year long. And you'll see some action out here right now. It's second and five at the 23 of Michigan. Ohio State's just into the ball game. They're working out of the eye formation. Wide man to the left side as on the fake. Lemke gives it off to the first man through, and it looks as though he has stopped short of a first down by Tom Beckman. It was Elmer Lippert. Now it looks as though they may have to measure. Elmer Lippert is the shortest Ohio State player since Tad Weed, the field goal kicker back in the 50s. He's 5'7", a sophomore from Sandusky. It's going to be a very, very close measurement out here for the first down. They're spotting it right now. It looks as if they're about six inches short out here, but remember, Ohio State has a good field goal unit, and they're well within range right now of a field goal, I would imagine, with that tailwind a factor. They're about a foot and a half short. And they've got a good field goal kicker in Fred Schramm. He's hit on 7 of 12 this year. Ball resting just short of a first down. Carpenter, Grambo, Beckman, Keller, and Gallagher along that front line for Michigan. Ohio State now lining up in the straight T in the backfield. They've got everybody back there. As Don Lamka calling the signals at quarterback, he gives it off to Randy Keith, and Randy Keith pulls his way up. It looks as though he's got a first down. He has to the 17 of Michigan. Stopped by Keller and Taylor for the Wolverines. Linebackers for Michigan again, Tom Key and Mike Taylor. Wolfman is Frank Gussick, and the deep man Bruce Elliott, Tom Darden, and Randy Logan. In similar tight spots, uh, first, and particularly in the first quarter of action throughout the season, the Michigan defense has come up with that big play, forcing the fumble or forcing a penalty on the offensive units. Michigan has been in trouble in a lot of first periods, time all season long. That they have. Greg Ellis back in there at middle guard now for Michigan. Again, uh, the straight tee for the Buckeyes on first and 10 at the Michigan 17-yard line. And there's a mix-up as it's given to Keith. He fumbled, and Michigan, I believe, is recovered. Michigan has the football. Well, you were talking about the big plays, Dave McKay, and there's one of the big ones. I don't know who we're going to credit with that fumble. If there were about five Wolverines on it. Well, I tell you, that defensive football team of Jim Young, the coordinator here at Michigan, is absolutely outstanding. They just get the job done under pressure, no question about it. So the Wolverines take over at their own 17-yard line. They're working out of the wishbone tee. Rather, is split wide to the right side. The handoff is given to Shuttlesworth, and the big fellow pulls his way up to the 20-yard line, pushed back by the middle of that Ohio State line, led by linebacker Stan White. You know, something that's important to mention early in the ballgame time, and that is the fact that this guy, Slade, Michigan's sophomore quarterback, came in under a severe pressure situation against Michigan State and really got his baptism uh, the hard way, beating the Spartans in East Lansing, and he's done it such a great job but this in front of the Michigan crowd is the biggest pressure pack he, he has ever operated under. 104,000 people screaming at him, so it's going to take a little time for him to loosen up. 
Well, it's second and seven for Michigan. They're at their own 20-yard line. They have an eye formation strong right. The pitch out goes to Taylor around that right side. Gets a good block from Brandstatter as he moves up over the 25 to the 30, and he's running the bounds at the 35-yard line. Ed Shuttlesworth also out on a devastating block that time, cutting down two men before Rip Seifert came back to knock Taylor out of bounds. First and ten to go for Michigan at the 35. That it was Shuttlesworth. I saw you looking for that block there, a little hesitation. It was Ed Shuttlesworth who sprung the uh, defensive end, actually knocked him right out of the play, give Taylor the room that he needed. Another sophomore in the lineup for Michigan, Tom, in a big pressure game. Brandstatter now moving back over to the left side where he'll be employed as a strong side tackle. Rather is split to the right side. And the handoff is given to Shuttlesworth. A big hole up the middle, and Shuttlesworth rambles up to about the 41-yard line. Pulled down by Dan Cotillo and Stan White. All-American Reggie McKenzie that time, and Tom Coyle, his guard buddy in the Michigan offensive line, opened up a fine hole that time. Shuttlesworth, as we know, Tom, he doesn't need an awful lot of room to operate. He makes his own holes, but that time he had plenty, and only a good tackle by the linebacker of Ohio State stopped a big gainer. Second and four yards to go. Both ends are tight. They're in the eye. Strong left. Handoff is given off to Shuttlesworth, and he blows his way up to about the 44-yard line. He's going to be a little short of a first down, it looks like, from here. George Hassanall made the tackle again for Ohio State. Shuttlesworth came into this ball game with 758 yards to his credit, an average of five yards per pickup. He ranks number six in the Big Ten in rushing. He's only a sophomore. Third down and about a yard short of a first down. So let's see if they give it off to Big Ed. Slade waiting for the snap. Turns, pitches back to Taylor instead, and he cuts back to the 45, puts his head down, and he's got a first down to the 46-yard line, and he ran into Stan White. Stan White, you might recall, had a key interception in that game against Michigan last year that set up a clinching touchdown for the Buckeyes. A grudging tackle. Taylor had to hit White head on to pick up that extra yard, and he did it, but just momentum on Billy's part to got him the first down. White was right on the money with that play. They actually had it pretty well stopped. Taylor had to cut in. They'll spot it at the Wolverine 47-yard line. First and 10, no score in the ball game. Nine minutes to go in this first quarter. Michigan so far hasn't been out of its own side of the field as the pitch out this time to Taylor around the left side, and he is pulled down from behind at the 50-yard line by Vic Cagle, the middle guard. Middle guard, one of the places that Ohio State has been decimated this year. Their starter, Kevin Fletcher, knocked out because of injury. They lost Shad Williams, a tremendous defensive tackle because of injury. Tom Slade coming off the field, Tom. He was limping. You'll see a quarterback change for Michigan right now. I mentioned he was banged up when he carried that ball a few moments ago in that early series for Michigan, and he has been replaced. Larry Sippa coming on in, another sophomore. Cincinnati to take over for Tom Slade. We'll keep an eye on Slade on the sideline. Second down and eight yards to go. Strong left working out of the eye formation. A flag goes down. We may get a delay of game penalty here called against Michigan. A little long in getting Sippa in there and get him in the backfield, calling the s- signals, getting him up to the line of scrimmage, and then Michigan was not able to get it off in time. I remember mentioning a few times early in the season that when you have a second and eight situation, a lot of times your pass patterns are a little more predictable. Now, with second and 13, Michigan can definitely go for a deeper pattern and the and the penalty factor may actually work in reverse against the Buckeyes because Michigan can throw the ball. So now it's second down and 13, as you mentioned, and the handoff is given to Shuttlesworth. He runs straight ahead, and again, it's big Stan White there to meet him for Ohio State at the 47-yard line of Michigan along with Rick Seifert. Stan White had the most tackles last year of any Ohio State defensive man, and he is a bruiser. The glass is down below taking a look at Tom Slade, Michigan's uh, injured quarterback. It looks as if a left shoulder seems to be the problem from here. We can't tell definitely. We'll try to get a definite word on it, but uh, he's out of action right now. It looks as if it's a shoulder injury. Bo Rather is going to split to the right side on third and ten. They're working out of the wishbone. Sippa fakes to Shuttlesworth around the right side. He's being chased by three Buckeyes, and he's all down and about the line of scrimmage. Stan White. George Hassanall, Randy Grandishar over there to chase him down at the 48. No game. Boy, that was a classic defensive uh, effort by Ohio State against the option play. They just corralled Taylor in the deep backfield, and they had Sippa all wrapped up, four or five Buckeyes. He didn't stand a chance. He was simply running for the sidelines. Tom Campana, who returned a punt 50 yards the last time for Ohio State. We have the three top punt return men in this ball game. Tom Darden, Bruce Elliott of Michigan. Campana, Ohio State's been averaging nine yards. Here comes 
Dots Sauer's kick. It's a short one this time. Hits on the 20. Campana picks it up at the 15. Straight up the field to the 20, but he's not going to get away this time. He's pulled down at the 23-yard line. Tom Coyle, the first down to reach him along with Jim Branstadter for Michigan. So it'll be at the 24 of Ohio State, first and 10 for the Buckeyes. 37-yard punt that time and an 8-yard run back by Campana. Let's check out the backfield now for Ohio State. They had Randy Keith running out of the fullback position. On the last series, it was Keith who fumbled. They've come back in there now with Galvis and Leppard, and they are lined up in the I formation. They have two wide receivers to the right side. Going back as Lamb could have passed, he fires a desperation pass upfield, and it is incomplete. Both Dart and Elliott went up in the air for the football. I think either one of them could have caught it, but they ran into each other, and the ball dropped. Butch Carpenter put the heat on the Ohio State quarterback. He faded far to the right and deep, and Carpenter just swarmed in there and made him throw that ball a little bit early. The pattern did not quite develop. Michigan nearly had another big break. Dick Wakefield, the flanker, was the man who was down there in the vicinity, although it looked as though from here Lanka just got rid of that football before he was swarmed under. Dick Wakefield, incidentally, is the nephew of the former Detroit Tiger star of the same name. He's the leading receiver on this Ohio State team as Lamka gives it off to the first man through Dick Galvis, and he doesn't go anywhere as he is stacked up for the right side of that Michigan line along with middle linebacker Mike Taylor. Tom Beckman also in on the charge. Gain of perhaps one, and that's all. Remember last year at Ohio State, uh, Bruce Elliott was stung by Kern on a touchdown pass in Ohio that time. Lamka went right back to Elliott's zone here this afternoon at Michigan Stadium. So uh, as uh, Elliott splits out now to cover the flanker. He's watching somebody go out of the ball game on the sideline, making sure he's completely off the field, but that may be Ohio State's favorite zone. On third and nine, they give it off in the draw play to Galvos, and again, he is hit after a yard gain of the 26-yard line by Taylor and Key, the linebackers. So that'll make it fourth and eight, and Ohio State will have to punt. Gary Lago, who has averaged almost 41 yards per kick this year for Ohio State, will be punting. Darden and Elliott both back, and here's Lago's kick coming down to Darden at the 35-yard line. Comes up the sidelines to the 40, and he is hit and dropped at the 42-yard line. Jim Crago, left guard, first down to meet him for the Buckeyes. And Michigan will put it in play now at the 42 of the Wolverines. First and 10, no score in this ballgame, 537 remaining in the first quarter. 39-yard punt that time by Lego, and a 7-yard run back by Dart. Oh, rather, will split to the right side, and they'll work out of the wing eye, or the power eye to the right side. Sip is still running the team at quarterback, and he gives it off to Shuttlesworth, and he moves up to the 45-yard line, where he is stacked up. First of all, by Dan Cotillo, the right side tackle on defense for Ohio State. Tom, having not been entirely on top of the action in the last three or four weeks, I'm wondering when is the last time they've gone to Seymour on a on a uh, tight pattern, that Michigan's tight end, a good over-the-center pass or something like that. I, I look for that sometime this afternoon, possibly uh, here in the first half. Not too often. They haven't thrown tight too much in the past few weeks. From the wishbone again, this time it's old and split to the right side, and Sippa gives it off to... Billy Taylor, and Taylor's off the left, or rather it's Glenn Dowdy, and he's off the left side, and it looks as though he's close to a first down at the 48-yard line of Ohio State, stopped by Rich Cappell, filling in for the regular defensive left end, Tom Merritt, who is out with an appendectomy, and they're going to bring the chains into Baser. I was second-guessing on that, uh, as you were, Tom. You hesitated calling that play. The faking was so good, it looked as if Taylor had the football, but it was Dowdy. He, ca he just carries out every blocking assignment so thoroughly that, and uh, in such a low trajectory. You don't know whether he has a football or not, and that time he nearly broke it all away. He was just one uh, one man away from going about 60 yards with that football. Just a great effort by Doughty. It is just shy of a first down on third down. This time they line up with two tight ends. Shuttlesworth and Taylor are in the eye behind Larry Sippa, running the team at quarterback now after an injury to Tom Slade. The handoff is given off to Shuttlesworth. He's got a first down as he Plows his way up close to the 45-yard line, stacked up for the middle of that Ohio State defense, led by a safety man, Rick Seifert, who has a rather unusual hobby in that he collects frogs. It's a great day for it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Get him out of the mud. <laughs> Four and a half minutes to go here in the first quarter. 
No score between the Buckeyes and the Wolverines. Michigan with the ball at the 45 of Ohio State, first and 10. They send rather wide to the right side and against the wishbone tee behind Larry Sippa. Cincinnati sophomore. He turns and pitches out to Dowdy, cuts back at the 45, swings wide to the sidelines at the 40, and he's bumped out of bounds at about the 37-yard line by Seifert. What a move by Dowdy. Inside, he took everybody with him and then simply cut very, very quickly to the outside. And it's got to be a little slippery on that turf down there, although we haven't seen anybody uh, slip around every time. I'm no. thinking that it uh, might be a little bit treacherous out there, but Dowdy with a fine move. This may be his afternoon. He really looks sharp. Well, he hasn't been employed that much as a runner this year, carrying the ball only 71 times, but he dragged him out of a big hole when they were stopping Taylor at Purdue last week. This time he's lined up on the left side of the wing on the power eye left side. Mike Oldham is split to the left side, and the ball is given off to Shuttlesworth, and he simply hurdles his way over the middle of that line down to about the 33-yard line. He's got another first down for Michigan. Randy Kranishar, the linebacker, making the stop on him. Off the bottom of that Michigan pile, again, it's Murdoch, McKenzie, and Coyle, the three men in the middle of that offensive line for Michigan, and they really do a job. They were nose-nose to the ground that time. Most devastating offensive attack that Michigan has ever put on the board in the modern era. 399 points to date. First down and 10 yards to go. The ball resting at the 33-yard line of Ohio State in possession of Michigan on the counter play. They give it off to Taylor over the left side. He finds a little bit of a hole, and he's worked it down to the 28-yard line. Ken Luckner, defensive end on the right side, making the tackle for the Buckeyes. To mention, too, uh, we mentioned the kicking game for Ohio being an important factor there as the Buckeyes drove deep early in the ball game. Dana Coyne is effective from 40 yards out, and he has that distance uh, coming up here with the next couple of plays for Michigan. So if they should stall on the ground, uh, Coyne may come through and give Michigan some points here in the first quarter. Mike Oldham is split wide to the right side on second and five at the 20 of Ohio State. The ball this time is given off to... Glenn Dowdy around the left side, and Dowdy is pulled down by three Buckeyes, led by Randy Grandishar at the 25-yard line. Great faking again by Larry Sippa. You know, Dave, you're talking about Tom Slade coming out of there earlier and uh, how they're working on him. You know it's a real joy for Bo Schembechler to have somebody like Sippa to come right into the ball game and replace him without hardly losing a step. That's right, and, and you've got to remember, too, uh, Jack McBride. Tom played a veteran season uh, behind Don Moorhead, and he is a senior on the bench, and he would be a very cool customer in a tight ball game. It's third down and two yards to go. Power eye, strong right side, both ends are tight. Pitch out goes to Taylor around the left side of the 25. He puts his head down. He's close to a first down. Depending on where they mark his point of furthest advance, Vic Cagle was over there on the stop for Ohio State. Uh, the ball control of the Michigan team at the Michigan State ball game, and he's had it ever since, but uh, Casey is a great competitor, and he, you can bet that he can uh, help this ball club if they get into a tight spot. Well, it's going to be, again, just inches short. This is about the third time we've had this situation in this ball game, which still has 2.26 to go in the first quarter. As far as the snow and the rain, it has let up a little bit here right now. We had a tremendous snowstorm when the bands came on the field, but it's uh, let up now. Of course, Michigan going for it as they're just shy of the Buckeye, Buckeye 23-yard line. And Larry Sippa has a straight tee in the backfield for the first time for Michigan. And the handoff is given to Shuttlesworth, and he's off the right side, and boy, it's going to be close. He was pushed back in there. By the left side of that Ohio State line, led by linebacker Randy Grandishar and Mike Scannell, and they say he did not make the first down. Well, it's officially the Michigan-Ohio State game right there. What a tremendous play by the Buckeyes. They stacked in on Shuttlesworth, and he just struggled. He was just inches short of the first down, but a super defensive effort. Boy, you can't come up with any finer play than that under pressure. Michigan, I thought that time, might just sneak out wide and try to uh, fake the Shuttlesworth, but they went with the sure thing, and uh, the Buckeyes came up and stopped it. So the Buckeyes taking over at their own 23-yard line, or just over the 23-yard line. Lamka gives it off to Galbos, finds a hole over the left side. He's pulled down by Logan and Taylor. And there was a fumble, but I believe it occurred after the whistle had blown. It is. They'll mark the ball at the 26-yard line, so a gain of about three on the play. Make it second down and a long seven. Time running out here in this first quarter. Here comes Dave Gallagher out of the ball game. Greg Ellis goes back in. He'll move over to the middle guard, and Rambo goes back to a tackle. Clock running with just 1.40 remaining in this first quarter. No score if you just joined us. 
Lamke gives it off to Elmer Lippert, and Lippert, the little scat back from Sandusky, moves up close to the 30-yard line where Ellis put the stop on him. Tom, I'm not sure what the strategy is. Michigan is flopping their defensive ends around one side to the other, even when the ball is in the middle of the field, which uh, is some kind of a strategy by uh, Coach Jim Young of Michigan. Usually when it's on a hash mark and you have a wide side, you give your quicker ends, your uh, faster guy, more room to move out there. But uh, when it's in the middle of the field, I don't see any particular reason for it, but the Wolverines are doing that. Big third down and four. Back to pass goes Lamp. They fires a sideliner, and it is caught by Wakefield. He goes out of bounds at the 46 of Ohio State. That's a first down for the Bucks. Well good thrown catch ball. by Wakefield. That it was. A good combination all the way. Carpenter about two steps away from Lampke when he let that ball fly, and uh, he was closing in very quickly, but it's going to take a super pass rush by, I think, more than one individual to uh, bust up an Ohio State passing attack. They can throw the ball well. As you mentioned, Wakefield just a fine receiver, and uh, that'll be a tough thing for Michigan's defensive backs to cope with all afternoon. Wakefield at 6'4", tallest receiver for Ohio State. He's out to the left side as the handoff is given off to Lippert, and this time he's stacked at the line of scrimmage and falls forward for maybe a yard. Mike Keller was able to bust through there from his defensive end to make the stop. Tom Batista now has checked in there. He's employed as a flanker, switching with Wakefield, and he's another tall fellow, 6'3". Wakefield, one of the few seniors on this team. You'll notice as you go down this Ohio State lineup, the scarcity of seniors. This time, Batista coming wide the left side, working out of the eye. Lamka gives it off to the tailback. Leppard, and he is stopped after a gain of two up to the 49-yard line. Key, Taylor, Gussick all in on the stop for Michigan. And when you say stopped, that is the most <laughs> disreputable adjective that you can use when you find yourself in an Ohio State-Michigan game because these guys do a great deal more than just stop somebody. They stun them. They bury them. And that play is going to be the final play of the first quarter with the score Michigan nothing, Ohio State nothing. Tom Hemingway and Dave McKay back here at Michigan Stadium in a scoreless tie after one tie after one quarter between the Ohio State Buckeyes and the Wolverines of Michigan. Third and seven for Ohio State at their own 48. Back to pass goes Lampka down the middle of goes. It's caught by Wakefield. He had Keller with him and a pass completed to him to the outside and a flag was thrown. It could be. If it is pass interference against Michigan, and that appears to be the call, it would give Ohio State a first down where Wakefield actually was stopped short of it. And that is going to be the call. Had to be an awfully, awfully tight call. Looked like a pretty good tackle by Keller over there just as the ball was touched by Wakefield. I'll tell you, Wakefield did a fine job of hanging out of the football because Keller did uh, wrap him up early, but uh, the flag was thrown right there. Referee was right on top of it. It's at the 47 of Michigan first and 10 for the Buckeyes. Batista wide to the right side, but the handoff is given off to Rick Galbus, the co-captain from Menor, Ohio, and he runs straight up the middle, down over the 45 to about the 44-yard line, stacked up again by the middle of that Michigan defense. Tom, I think one barometer in a tight call like that that we can rely on, that's just to watch Bo Schembechler, and if he makes it to midfield and he's turning somewhere near a bright <laughs> orange, you'll know that it might have been a bad call, but he stayed quite calm on the sidelines that time, so it must have been a pretty good uh, whistle by the referee. Right, he kept his hat on, <laughs> threw it down four times last week against on one play. Here's Batista wide to the right side, second down and seven yards to go. Lampke gives it off to the first man through Rick Galvis, and he doesn't find any running room. He runs into Carpenter and Grambo. Left side and the tackle respectively for Michigan right at the 44-yard line. So it'll be third down and seven. Well, the Ohio State Club has given us no mystery as to what they like to do in a passing situation. They've gone to Wakefield now three times, and he's hung out of the football on each occasion. So Michigan will have to take a tip from that, maybe belt him right in the line and not let him out too quickly if they possibly can. Wakefield is going to line up as the tight end on the right side. Batista splits wide to the right side. The setbacks are split as Lampka goes back to pass, fires it, and it is caught and dropped immediately as Rick Galvis at the 43-yard line, way short of a first down. Coming up to make that tackle was Frank Gussick, and he appears to be sh shaken up a little bit on that play. Of course, he's working with a real painful hip pointer. Yeah, he's definitely dizzy, Tom, holding his head as he goes back there. He really decked uh, Galbos, but Galbos is a big guy, a big fullback for Ohio State, and it takes a little bit out of you to whack him as hard as uh, Gussich did. Gary Lago, the punter from Ashtabula, Ohio. A junior standing back at his own 45-yard line. Elliott and Darden are deep. High pass from center. Lego pulls it down, gets his punt away. It's a high-sailing kick. Elliott calls for a fair catch, but he'll let it go, and it bounces into the end zone. Touchback for Michigan. They'll bring it out to the 20. And as we have a moment, 
Let's pause. Ten seconds for station identification. This is the University of Michigan Broadcasting Service. Well, after a 42-yard punt by Lego that went into the end zone, it'll give Michigan the ball first and ten. Larry Sippa still running the team at quarterback. Tom Slade was shaken up earlier in that first quarter. No score in the ball game. Two tight ends for Michigan. Strong to the right side of the power eye. And the handoff goes to Shuttlesworth, and he goes up the middle for maybe a couple. Tom, before that punt situation fades in memory too quickly here, Elliott did a fine job standing at about the two or three yard line. He signaled for the fair catch. Of course, you can do that and let the ball fly into the end zone. That ball hit right about on the goal line. A very gutty play by Elliott and a real fine judgment giving Michigan the ball on the 20-yard line is a real break for the Wolverines. That could have been down right about the one or two-yard line with Ohio State all over the place. Well, after that gain of two, it's second down and eight yards to go. The wishbone with Oldham split wide to the right side. Larry Sippa fakes to Shuttlesworth, gives it off to Dowdy, and he finds a hole over the left side. He's up to about the 26-yard line where he is pulled down by Carl Kern in there playing at a safety position now. Incidentally, Kern is no relation to Rex Kern, the great quarterback for three years for the Ohio State Buckeyes. Watching uh, quarterback Tom Slade on the sideline, he's been conferring, of course, with uh, the uh, doctors and attorneys of Michigan since he was taken out there in the first period with an injury, and he's very, very upset, very angry, so I doubt if we'll see him back in there. It, it looks as if I thought it was a shoulder injury. It's really hard to tell, but uh, I would say he's definitely out of action the rest of the afternoon. It's third and four for Michigan. Power eye left side. They've split Oldham to that side, and there goes Taylor around the left side. He is hit and falls forward close to the 30. Fumbles, and Ohio State has it. I think it was Rick Seifert who came up with a football for the Buckeyes after Taylor was racked going around that left side. And so, Ohio State, for the second time this afternoon, deep in Michigan territory. The first time they lost the ball in a fumble. Now they've got it, the Michigan 28, first and 10 to go. And again, the Michigan defense is going to be tested sorely. They have not been found wanting much this year. Both Batista and Wakefield are split to the left side, working out of the eye formation. It's given off to the first man, Rick Galvis, and he finds the running room rugged as he is hit at the 29, actually a loss of one. Randy Logan came in to cut his ankles out from under him. Tom, look at the Buckeyes here jumping now into the eye formation as they have a little more uh, room to uh, operate. They can go with a pretty good drive for 28 yards in a couple of formations, but this guy, Woody Hayes, just misses no opportunity to try and confuse the defense time it didn't work as Michigan came up with another fine play. This time they've split the setbacks as the handoff is fake. Lamka is going back to pass. Fires it down the middle and it is incomplete. Intended for the tight end. It was broken up. It was broken up back there by Tom Dart. Now Rick Capel coming out there, normally a defensive end, but he was employed as the tight end, and he's going out of there now. Darden was watching him closely. Now Ohio State has called for a timeout to talk things over. So there's a timeout on the field with a score. Michigan nothing, Ohio State nothing. Well, Woody Hayes pulling everything right now as he brought his defensive end, Rich Kappel, in to run out of the tight end uh, on that last particular play. And Kappel almost came up with the, inter with the uh, reception. Simple down and out, uh, down and across the middle pattern. We've seen it, uh, you know, years and years, high school ball or anything else. Nothing fancy about that one. But uh, Darden actually got to the ball before Kappel dove for it and, and probably should have had an interception. He, uh, I think he was closer to it than he realized. It doesn't look as if Lamka is getting an awful lot of zip on the football from up here. It's floating quite a bit, and uh, you might see one of the Wolverines pick that thing off. They've been awfully close here on two or three occasions, but he tends to wait for that receiver to get awfully open out there, and they have been doing that thus far in the ball game. They're not sending an awful lot of people out, but the uh, receivers are getting open against Michigan. But the ball, I don't think, is being thrown with that much authority, and I think floating it as he has been. Uh, of course, into that wind, too, about uh, 15 or 20 mile an hour wind possibly at this point. It's third down and 11. With the ball resting at the 29 of Michigan. Ohio State in a passing situation, and Lamka is going back to throw. 
Fires a sideliner to Galvos. He's got it at 28. Goes to the 25. He's pulled down at the 21-yard line, short of a first down by Greg Ellis and Mike Taylor. Lamka, as we mentioned before the game, does not go to the air that much. And now it looks as though Fred Schramm is checking into the lineup for Ohio State to attempt a field goal. He is 7 out of 12 this year. He's a senior from Mazeline, Ohio. 5'10", and he gained 11 pounds over the summer. He's up to 185 now. He will be kicking in to this win from about 37 yards out. And his kick is up, and it is... No good. Off to the left. So once again, the Michigan defense has stiffened. And stopping the Ohio State Buckeyes after a fumble gave the Bucks the ball first and 10 at the Michigan 28-yard line, and now the Wolverines will put it in play at their own 20. Incidentally, Michigan now on the ground has picked up 87 yards. Ohio State has 25, and through the air, Ohio State has an equal amount, 25, going in the air five times and hitting on three. So, so far in this ball game, it's been just about anybody's ball game. Ohio State letting, late in getting a defensive player on the field and now the Buckeyes are having to call for a timeout to stop the clock or they were going to be tagged with a delay of game penalty. And now we see Reggie McKenzie coming off. Dave, you know what that's all about? No, I don't, Tom. We're checking right now on the sideline. I saw him come out of there. He seems to have his head wrapped or something. I don't know whether he... Uh possibly an equipment problem of some kind. He's still mobile and, and hostile as ever, so he'll be back in there. It's nothing that serious. It might have been something in his eye, perhaps. In fact, it looks as though Tom Slade has uh, got his uh, jersey off. He's talking to Bo Schembechler, and it could be as though Slade is a little bit more uh, on the road to recovery than we might have thought. Well, I'd love to be second-guessed that way, Tom. <laughs> That's and I believe here he comes, Dave. He is. Here comes Slade on to the ball game. Well... You'll remember when Billy Taylor hurt his shoulder in, at Michigan State and got taped up and came back in and did such a fine job, and I just have a hunch that's exactly what they've done to uh, Slade, and I do think it was his left shoulder, not his throwing shoulder, but his left uh, shoulder that was taped up. I could be all wrong. It may not be even a shoulder at all, but uh, it looked like that from up here. On the first play from scrimmage, it's picks back to Dow. He comes up to the 23-yard line, bang down to the 24. Mike Hobart has checked in there for Reggie McKenzie at a guard position. They're working on Reggie's helmet over here. Looks as though he had a little bit of problem. Grandishar, the tackle on that last play. Carl Kern, defensive back for Ohio State, is limping badly uh, down there. And if the, if the Michigan State uh, spotters up here in the press box get a look at that, Michigan might just throw to his zone down and out. He's over here on the right side, on the short side of the field right now. From the wishbone tee on second and seg. Slade on the option play. Pitches back to Taylor around the right side. Goes to 25. He's pulled down from behind at the 30. Looks as though he's got a first down. Stan White moving over there to knock Taylor down, but it looks as though from here he's got a first down. Boy, a tough play by Stan White. That was very, very close. Taylor had to turn on the speed, and, and White actually caught up with Billy, and Billy can really move. But uh, big Stan White collared him from behind and pulled him down, but he just got the first down. That for Michigan this afternoon. Their fifth first down. Ohio State has three. Give you a little idea of the battle so far. Well, McKenzie started to check in and then he came back out again. They're still working on that helmet. First and ten, rather wide to the left side, but they give it off to the fullback Shuttlesworth. Up he comes over the 35 and the 37-yard line. Running well off that left side between Murdoch and Mike Hoban, who's in there at the guard position now. Cagle and White on the tackle for Ohio State. That's the first time, I think, in about 20 minutes now that we've seen Michigan's offensive line open up a clear hole in that Ohio State uh, front four or five. They have been very, very tough out here, but that time it looked as if Coyle and Murdoch had kind of regained their authority out there. We'll see if they can uh, keep it up. Again, it's the wishbone tee for Michigan. As Slate gives it off to Taylor, he plows his way over the right side, and again, he's close to a first down at the 42-yard line. Tom Coyle, Jim Branstadter out there blowing a hole open for him. And the tackle by Grandishar. And it is a first down, says the official. You know, a couple of things we want to keep in mind, too, as uh, things perk along here. Remember the old end-around play, Northwestern game, Tom. A couple of those things we haven't seen uh, all year long since that opening ball game in Evanston. And uh, this is the day you want to use them. It'll do no good Sunday morning. <laughs> here comes McKenzie back into the ball game now. And Hoban comes out of there. So McKenzie's helmet's okay. They give it off to Shuttlesworth. A big hole over the right side. And Shuttlesworth is into Ohio State territory where he's tripped up by White at the 48-yard line of the Buckeyes. All right, there's no question about it now. That offensive line from Michigan has taken charge out there. They're really opening up some holes. We'll have to remember, 
as uh, the Wolverines moved for a couple of long drives that were stalled, that offensive unit ran an awful lot of plays, Tom, and they came over here when Ohio had the ball for quite a while, had a chance to rest and regroup, and that makes a difference in any kind of a ball game. Those long exchanges can really poop out an offense, but uh, the Wolverines are fresh right now. And they've only got about six inches to go for the first down, and it's Taylor on the call, a big hole over the right side. He's down to the 40, the 35, and he was pulled down from behind by Carl Kerr. Again, just when it looked as though Taylor might be off to the races. But that's another first down for Michigan at the 35 of the Buckeyes. Their seventh first down of the afternoon now. And their third straight in this series, which originated on the Michigan 20-yard line. And they want to stay right on the ground as they come in with another tight end, Oldham, but he is flanked out to the left. But they'll probably stay right on the ground. And they've got the wishbone working behind Slade as the handoff is given to Taylor. Bounces off one man at the line of scrimmage and falls down to the 33-yard line. A gain of a couple. We see Rick Seifert coming off the pile along with Vic Cagle and George Hassanall. Well, they're placing it at the 34-yard line now, so give them a gain of one on that last one. Second down and nine yards to go. No score in the ball game. Seven minutes to go in the second quarter. The handoff is faked by Slate. Pitches back to Dowdy around the left side. Turns at the 30, and he is muscled out of bounds at about the 29-yard line by Stan White. Billy Taylor out there trying to give him a little bit of escort. But Dowdy got a lot of company in a hurry. Boy, they wiped out a couple of tubas and a yeah. drum and everything else over here in the Michigan band. They really scattered the uh, musical men down here. Formation may be a little depleted during uh, <laughs> halftime ceremonies. May have a couple wide open spaces. Second, third down and four yards to go. Again, it's the wishbone. Hold him wide to the right side at the 29 of Ohio State. Tom Slade back running the team at quarterback. Pitches back to Dowdy. Heads around the left side to the 30 to 25. And he's pushed out of bounds. He's got a first down at the 22 of the Bucks. Again, it's Rick Seifert coming over there to bump him out. And Michigan, which early in the ball game, drove to the 23, only to be stopped by Ohio State. Now has a first and 10 short of the Buckeye 22. Tom, you can see just the difference in the quickness and the authority of that offense when uh, Slade is in there. There's no question about it. He is a boss out there running that offensive unit. He, he just chews them out and gets the job done. Or rather is in there. He splits wide to the right side. Slade gives it to Shuttlesworth. Straight fullback power dive off the right side, and Shuttlesworth moves it inside the 20 to the 19-yard line where Hassanaw, Cagle, and White all stack him up at 104,000 strong on their feet here, more than they're sitting down this afternoon. Tom, what was the pass pattern they used last week uh, with Oldham down at Purdue? He's in the ball game right now. We're second and seven. Ohio State's defense is very tight. We might keep an eye on Oldham. Mike ran a down and out toward the sideline for that all-important game that took it to the nine-yard line for the wishbone tee. Again, it's given to Shuttlesworth. This time, he's straight up the middle, close to the 17-yard line. Well, nothing fancy here at all as it has been this year. Michigan offensive line just going out and hitting people, knocking them down, and Shuttlesworth, Dowdy, and Taylor running behind them. Cagle and Cotillo on the stop the last time. They'll spot it at the 17-yard line. Third down and five yards to go. The clock shows just over six minutes remaining in the second quarter. A scoreless tie between the Buckeyes and the Wolverines. One whale of a ball game so far, but did you really expect anything else? This time it's fake to Shuttlesworth, given to Dowdy. He stopped short of a first down at the 14-yard line. And now we've got a big play coming up. It'll be fourth and about two. Cotillo and Lutner on the stop the last time. Well, they're going to spot it at the 15, and here comes Dana Coyne into the ball game. Well, there's that Buckeye defense we're talking about. Just a tremendous effort. Boy, they came up with a big play that time to force Michigan now into a field goal situation. Coyne kicking from 32 yards out. He'll have the wind to his back as Slade kneels. Coyne, the hero of last Saturday's ball game against Purdue, gets his foot into the ball. The ball goes up and through. Dana Coyne has given Michigan a 3 to nothing lead with 5.19 to go in this second quarter. Dana Coyne now with seven. Field goals out of 12 tries this year. And now 74 points to his credit. Well, that drive of Michigan started on their own 20-yard line. 
And they moved it in 13 plays down until the Buckeye defense again was equal to the task of Dana Coy. Mooning it through to put the Wolverines on top, 3 to nothing. And now Coy will be kicking off. Deep for Ohio State. Morris Bradshaw, he's got it at the 10, to the 15, to the 20, and he is spilled at the 25-yard line. Jeff Stager and a couple of Michigan players seem to be shaken up on that play. Stager getting to his feet slowly, and there's another Michigan man down. Looks like Randy Logan from here, Tom. Can't be certain. And now Michigan has called for a timeout to take care of the injured player, so there's a timeout on the field with a score. Michigan 3, Ohio State nothing. State puts it in play, first and ten from their own 26-yard line. Don Lamka turns, keeps it himself, now pitches out wide and stopped at the line of scrimmage by Dave Elliott was Rick Galbus. No gain on the play. In fact, he might have suffered a yard loss. So it is second down and 11. Dave Elliott himself was shaken up about three weeks ago. Had to sit out a game because of an injury, but he's back in there now to replace Randy Logan. So we have the Elliott brothers on the defensive backfield, Bruce and Dave. Ohio State splitting Batista to the left side. The setbacks are split. The handoff is faked. It's back to pass. Goes Lampka. Fires a long one down the middle for Batista. It's intercepted by Dark at the 50. He's back to the 45. Stops at the 40. Spins free, and he's knocked down at the 38-yard line. Tom Nixon was down there to make the stop on Tom Dark. Well, as I mentioned, Lampka throws a little bit of a balloon ball, and that time Darden just went high in the air, made a great interception, but that ball was hung up there. He had a receiver open momentarily, but he didn't put the zip on the football. That's the third interception by Darden this year as the pitch out goes back to Dowdy as the flags go down. Dowdy is down to the 32-yard line of Ohio State, but let's check out the flags. Looked definitely like a motion penalty against Michigan, Tom. That's exactly what it was. One of the backs jumped off just a, a split second before the snap. Darden, incidentally, uh, brought that football back about 19 yards, so that means that he has over 170 yards in returns on interceptions this year, despite the fact that he's picked up only three. Of course, he took one back 92 yards earlier this year. Five-yard walk-off against Michigan for illegal motion. Puts the ball back to the 43 of the Buckeyes. First down and 15 for Michigan. They lead 3 to nothing. The clock shows 4.15 to go in the second quarter. Tom Slade shaking up early in the game, back in, running the team at quarterback, and back to pass he goes on first down, fires a long one for Rather, he's got it, he's pulled down at the 18-yard line. And Tom Campana back to make the stop. Boy, 104-plus going nuts here at Michigan Stadium as Slade, he definitely didn't injure his right shoulder, I'll tell you that. He fired <laughs> that ball perfectly. That was just a beautiful pass giving Michigan such fine field position right now. But watch this Buckeye defense. They haven't been uh, stung at all this afternoon with the exception of that field goal. That was Slate's first pass of the afternoon. The pitch out goes to Dowdy around the left side, turns the corner to the 20. He's hit at the 15. He falls forward and out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Hit by Kern, first of all, and then driven out by Stan White. And actually only a super effort by Dowdy that time got him any yardage at all, Tom. That Buckeye defense closes very quickly. But uh, I mentioned they Michigan not throwing the ball very often. They can really set up a defensive team and then burn them. And that's exactly what Slade did to Rather. That's exactly what Bo Schenberg is trying to tell people this year. We can pass and we have to. At the 13-yard line, the handoff is given off to Doughty. He finds a hole off the left side, and he slants his way down inside the 10 to about the 9. And that looks like another first down for Michigan, and it is. First and goal to go inside the Ohio State 9. Rich Capo making a stop for the Buckeyes on that last play. Well, Dowdy, absolutely the bread and butter man here for the Wolverines in the first half of this ball game. But don't forget, up front, he has had some fine blocking. His patterns, uh, running plays are generally a little bit wider. They're off the tackle and off the end, and that's where Michigan has been most effective here in the first half. Tom Slade with a power eye. Both ends are tight. They're strong to the right side, running from the left side, and they're going around. Billy Taylor fumbles the football, and it is picked up by Ohio State. 
Larry Howard jumped on that football as Taylor failed to come up with that wide pitch out from Tom Slade. And for the second time, Michigan gives up the football to the Buckeyes. Now, just to show you the quality now, this Michigan offense, I can't go into it too many times or it'll be a four, but instead of running right out on the field after that inter that uh, fumble recovery by Ohio, they stayed on the sideline, regrouped just a minute longer with their defensive coordinator to make sure that they're not going to get burned on this first play because that's where a team likes to come right back at you after a fumble. Well, Lampka's gone to be here more and more lately. He's got a straight tee in the backfield this time with both ends tied, and the handoff is given off to the left halfback. Elmer Lippert, and he has stopped standing up at about the line of scrimmage by Fred Grambo and Tom Key. Well, the skies are still cloudy here, but the rain and snow has let up. That was a gain of one of that last play. They do allow his advance to the 12-yard line, so it's about second and about nine. Again, the straight tee in the backfield. This time it's faked by Lamka and the option. He gives it off to the fullback now, running around the left side up to about the 14-yard line. Comes Rick Galbus, where he runs into Tom Key. You know, something that has surprised me, Ohio State's offense now in passing situations, they have gone right over the middle toward Darden on two or three occasions. Of course, he picked off that one at midfield just moments ago. And, boy, he's just one of the, if not the finest safety in college football. He's just a hawk out there, and he's tough to beat. And I'm very, very surprised that they've done that. They've got uh, young Dave Elliott on one side, Bruce Elliott on the other, and uh, I would be more apt to think they'd go there. Third and six. This time, Lamka gives it off to his fullback, Galbos, and again, he doesn't find much room to go. He's stacked up in the middle of that line, right at the line of scrimmage. Gussick and Gallagher, the first to reach him. Dave, I was just looking down here. Billy Taylor is sitting on the bench for Michigan. Everybody's come over to console him and tap him. And uh, if he gets back in there, I don't think he's shaken up, but if he does get his hands on that football, <laughs> I would be willing to wager maybe about eight to five odds that we might see one broken here. I think you're absolutely right. You'll see a couple of tackles broken, that's for sure. He is one disgusted player right now. Here comes Dick Lago into the ball, a high punt. Coming down to Bruce Elliott at the 38-yard line. Running behind guard, cut back to midfield, and he's dropped at the 44 of Michigan. Jim Craigle again, first down to reach him for the Buckeyes. The clock now shows just a minute and 29 seconds remaining in this first half. Michigan leading three to nothing. Well, Elliott played it smart that time. He was almost going to gamble, I think, just watching him. He was going to try and sweep back deep and get a little running room. The Buckeyes are right on top of him. But he put his head down and really got hit out there. But uh, many times it's better to take the punishment like that and keep control of the football right there at midfield rather than try and gamble and make the big gainer right away. 46-yard punt that time by Lago. Slade on the draw, gives it off to Taylor, and he is hit at the 45, rolls forward to the 49-yard line. He bounced off one Buckeye, ran into Harry Howard, and now Michigan has called a timeout to stop the clock. So there's a timeout on the field with a score of Michigan 3, Ohio State nothing. Tom Slade checking over to Bo Schenbeckler for one last message before he comes back out there. All set to go. Second down and six yards to go. The ball resting at the 48 of Michigan in possession of the Wolverines. And if nothing else, they'd like to drive far enough downfield perhaps to set up the marvelous Dana Coyne for another try at a field goal. They're working out of the eye formation. The pitch out goes to Taylor around the left side of the 45s. At the 50, he's pulled down from behind at the Ohio State 49-yard line by Lutner and Kern. Again, the Buckeyes defensing that sweep play very well. Tom, that play by Taylor has just been outstanding all year long, but he hasn't been able to move with it really this afternoon. Michigan, which fell two plays in the huddle, now going right back to the line of scrimmage, and here's a pass thrown out of bounds, and a flag goes down. Dowdy trying to get to the football. Looked as though he might have been pushed by Kern. And Randy Grandishar. And it is an interference call against the Buckeyes, and that will give Michigan a first down. Let's see where they place the football. At the 45 of Ohio State. Well, that was a tough play. Grandisher that time didn't actually see the ball thrown. I think Slade threw it even well ahead of uh, the Michigan uh, receiver coming down. He gunned it right out of bounds. But Grandisher really didn't do that, I don't think, on purpose. It would have been very, very dumb if he had. I'm but, not uh, so sure that Slade wasn't throwing just to stop the clock. Right. This time, three wide receivers back to pass goes Slade. He arches a long one down here intended for Dowdy. He can't catch up to it at the five-yard line. Kern and Cagle were both back covering on that play. Mm, 
the Michigan spotters upstairs there, they've got to be just jumping up and down because uh, Billy Taylor had swung to the left side, and he was covered by a linebacker, uh, Brandishar, that time out here about the 25-yard line. There's no way Brandishar is going to stay with Billy Taylor in a running situation, and uh, Taylor was wide open, but Slade chose to go deep to Dowdy, see if Glenn could outrun the defensive backs, but uh, on another pass play situation, we might just see it get dumped off over here to the uh, sideline situation to Taylor. Well, that play stopped the clock. 50 seconds showing on it. It's second down and 10 yards to go. Big Ed Shuttlesworth and Taylor lined up in the eye formation. And here's a flag for delay of game. It's going to be called against Michigan. And that's going to move it back, I believe, probably to the Michigan side of the 50-yard line. Nope, just the Ohio State side of the 50-yard line. Last week, Purdue, of course, as you know, keyed a great deal on Billy Taylor, and they held him only to 11 yards in the first half before Billy exploded. But in his place, Glenn Dowdy has given the ball more and more during the afternoon. It appears to be the same situation here this afternoon. The Ohio State Buckeyes keeping a close eye field on Billy Taylor, and they've given it more and more to Dowdy. This time, Slade gives it off to Shuttlesworth, and he puts his head down and drives close to the 45-yard line of Ohio State, about where the line of scrimmage was. Pass and all. On the tackle, Michigan quickly lining up. As again, calling a couple of plays in the huddle. The single setback this time is Shuttlesworth. is back to pass, goes Slade. He fires a long one. The flag is down. Rather can't catch it at the 20-yard line. He had it in his hand and it slid it away from him. But a flag was thrown upfield. Rather still on the ground, Tom. He was really scissored out there by Ohio State, hit by three Buckeyes. And he took it very, very hard in the chest. He's very slow. Referee standing over him right now to see if he's okay. Well, we're watching back upfield as that flag was thrown right at the line of scrimmage. And they are conferring with Ohio State. First period score, Northwestern 7, Michigan State nothing. Indiana leading Purdue 10-7 after the first quarter. Illegal procedure call against Michigan. It's declined by the Buckeyes, and that moves it around to fourth and about 10. And Michigan not wishing to take any chances here. They're going to bring their punter, Barry Dotsauer, into the ball game, and he will be kicking from about his own 45. Now, this guy, Campana, dropping back, though, Tom, that's a big enough chance because he yeah, can take right. it all away, and they'll have to be a superb punt coverage now. He took it 50 yards on the first. Oh, high pass from center, but Dotsauer gets it down, and he gets it away. It's a short kick, and Campana's going to let it roll, and it makes it into the end zone. Oh, Dowdy trying to knock it out as he spun into the end zone, and now... Uh, as we have a moment, let's quickly pause 10 seconds for station identification. Tom Hemingway and Dave McKay back here at Michigan Stadium, where Ohio State has 19 seconds, but they're back at their own 20-yard line. And they've got... Nineteen seconds to work with, and Lamka just falls with a football to the ground. He didn't risk any handoff there. Tom, why bother at this point? You're exhausted. You can't really do anything that well uh, when you're deep in your own territory. The only thing you could do stupidly is fumble a football, so Lamka doing a very smart thing there and running the clock out. And with that play, the first half comes to an end. With the score, Michigan 3, Ohio State nothing. Well, to start this second half, Ohio State has chosen to receive, and Michigan has gone with the wind. They will defend the south end of the stadium, where the wind is blowing out of at about 13 to 15 miles an hour, which means, of course, that in a very, very close ball game in the latter stages, that the Buckeyes would be going with the wind uh, should the situation present itself where a field goal might be needed. But that's a long ways away right now, Dave. Tom, I don't think the wind is quite as pronounced as it was when the ball game opened because of that snow squall and so forth. It uh, seems as if it's calmed down. It's actually much brighter out right now than it was uh, in the first half. Yes, it is. The clouds seem to be breaking up just a little bit right now. And although I would hesitate to say it because we'll be deluged if I do, it looks as though at least the threat of precipitation has diminished. Dana Coyne will be kicking off. And it'll be Morris Bradshaw standing deep for the Buckeyes back on his five-yard line. In that first half individually, despite the fact that he was keyed upon, Billy Taylor still picked up 63 yards. And you talk about a three-man rushing attack. Shuttlesworth and Dowdy both had 57. So that's, that's almost splitting it right down the middle for three players. Dana 
coin. All set to get this third quarter underway now as here he comes into the football and we've got a high kick coming down to Bradshaw right at the five-yard line up to the 10 to the 15 to the 20. Swings wide, trying to get away, and he is hit on a bruising tackle by Dave Elliott at the 20-yard line where the Bucks will put it in play first and 10. Now let's watch to see if Elliott or Logan comes back in. It is Randy Logan returning to the Michigan defensive backfield, so that's good news. He was shaken up in that second quarter. He's checked in now as the sideline halfback on defense. As Michigan, for those of you who do not know, will employ one defensive back at the sideline, the other to the wide side of the field. The wishbone D in the backfield for the Buckeyes. The quarterback is Don Lampka. He gives it to the fullback who fumbles. And now let's wait as they unpile that ball at the 21-yard line. It looked as though the Buckeyes have it themselves. Galbos evidently recovered his own fumble. He was hit by Fred Grambo. It was a good lick right at the 20, and he fell up to about the 21 where the ball is. So it's second down and nine. There's that defensive unit time forcing the break here early in the uh, second half of action. Michigan trying to press now. Have the Buckeyes on the 21-yard line. Split man to the right side is Tom Batista. The handoff is faked by Lanka. Pitches back deep to Bradshaw, and he is tripped up back at the 17-yard line by Randy Logan. Tom Batista, who has checked in there now, is a 6'3 junior. Welton, West Virginia, at that time he didn't get any place on the option play, taking a deep pitch out from Lanka. Tripped up by Logan back at the 18-yard line, a loss on the play, and make a third down and 12 yards to go. Time we've seen a lot of fine ball players this year for Michigan, but Logan has to be one of the most underestimated. He's outstanding. Junior from Detroit, he'll be back again next year. Lanka. On the draw, gives it off to Randy Keith. He finds a big hole over the middle. He's up over the 20, the 25, and the 30-yard line where he is knocked down by Tom Darden, and it's a first down for the Buckeyes. Great, yeah. ahead, great hole on the trap play that time. They set up Michigan very well. They had uh, Michigan's uh, defensive line streaming through there. They trapped him out, and he had a big hole to Rambo. Just a fine blocking effort by Ohio State that got them really out of the hole, measuring now for the first down, and they picked it up. That's what I tried to tell them, Dave. But <laughs> listen to me. I was a little premature there in the call. I thought they were going to set the ball a little bit farther than they did. But anyway, it is a first down for Ohio State just over the 30. Randy Keith is a sophomore also from Cincinnati. Big fellow like Shuttlesworth, 212. He hasn't been in there that much, but he carried the mail that time when they needed it. And now Ohio State a little unsettled on offense. So Lamp is going to call a timeout. So there is a timeout on the field with a score. Michigan 3, Ohio State nothing. All right, let's remember now as the ball game progresses, Ohio State using a timeout here that they did not want to use. And if this ball game gets down to the wire and they have to uh, somehow get on that scoreboard to get back in the ball game, that may be a very, very important factor. They really have wasted a timeout as far as uh, a coach is concerned because it was disorganization. One of the uh, ends was flopping around from one side to the other and didn't know exactly where he should be located. And Lamka quickly called the timeout to save the penalty. And uh, it was a wise move on Lampka's part, I guess, to uh, call the timeout rather than be assessed with a penalty. But it may cost them dearly later in the ballgame should they need another timeout. Well, Lamka has conferred with Woodrow Wilson Hayes. Who incidentally, is not decked out in his short sleeve shirt today. He's got the coat on. He's bowing to advancing age, I guess. All set to go. First and ten for the Buckeyes from the wishbone tee. It's given off to the fullback, Keith. He spins his way up to about the 34-yard line. Knocking him off stride was Mike Taylor, and applying the crusher was Randy Logan and Mike Keller. Dave, I guess we would be remiss if we didn't mention today that one of the all-time greats in this business, Bill Stern, died at the age of 64 years old. I know his voice has thrilled millions. And he did a lot of it right here at Michigan Stadium. He was one of the early broadcasters. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you might be. The National Broadcasting Company bids you a very hearty good afternoon, good morning, or good evening, depending upon where you're listening to this broadcast. Bill Stern speaking from the Yankee Stadium in a jam-packed Yankee Stadium in New York City. It's Army versus Notre Dame, and the kickoff is just about two minutes away. The Fighting Irish of Notre Dame has just come out on the gridiron, resplendent in a green jersey. New York is overcast this afternoon. The temperature's down in the 50s. There's no wind. It's a perfect day for a football game, and here comes the cadets out on the field. The captains are meeting in the center of the field. The 
toss of the coin going up in the air in just a second. Here the starting lineup for Notre Dame and Army. Overcast, no wind, temperature down in the 50s. And 75,000 people jam jamming the Yankee Stadium. There isn't a seat to be had that ever has been since last August. Here we go, the starting lineup for Notre Dame. Left end, Jim Martin. Left tackle, George Connor. Left guard, Bill Fisher. Center, George Strohmeyer. Right guard, John Mastrangelo. Right tackle, Johnny Fallon. Right end, Jack Zilly. Quarterback, Johnny Lujak. There's the doubtful starter, and he's going to start. Second down and six. Lamka throws it back to his tailback coming around. Uh, Elmer Lippert, and he is knocked down short of a first down at about the 37-yard line. A lot of blocking out in front over there, but Fred Grambro sliding through along with Tom Beckman to break it up, and it looks as though a Michigan player is getting to his feet slowly and limping. It is Mike Keller. Mike may have to come out of there. He is. Don Eaton has checked in to take his place. Keller has to come all the way across the field. He really is limping. You know, something, Tom, just in passing in the Bill Stern thing, it, it, he was so dramatic, and here he is uh, gone now on probably the biggest football Saturday of the season. That's right, and certainly one of the most dramatic. Again, the pitch out to left and around the left side. He is pulled down from behind. Short of a first down at the 39-yard line again by Randy Logan, who seems to have successfully shaken off his injury in that second quarter. Mike Keller, uh, you talk about underrated ball players. This guy maybe hasn't gotten all the due that he has deserved this year. The senior from Grand Rapids playing his final game in Michigan Stadium. And, boy, he has been a... He's been a steady ball player. And you're seeing a lot of people getting banged up out here, Tom, that haven't been injured in years because of that kind of a ball game. It's really brutal out there. Gary Lago will be punting now. High pass from center again. He drags it down. Michigan not rushing. As the punt return is not on as the free catch called for by Bruce Elliott at the 25-yard line where Michigan will take it for the first time in the second half. First and 10. 36-yard punt that time by Lago. Well, the punters have actually uh, done a fine job with the conditions not being as perfect as they could be out here, and both uh, Dotsauer and the Ohio State kicker have uh, kept their teams out of trouble, actually. Michigan now taking over in the 25-yard line. And Dave, we notice that Larry Sippa is running the team at quarterback. First and 10 from his own 25. He's got the wishbone tee behind him. Pitches out to Dowdy around the left side. Turns the corner to 25, comes up to the 30, and he is racked up first by Carl Kern right at the 30-yard line. He was quickly joined by Dan Cotillo. And they're marking it right at the 30-yard line, so it'll be second down and five yards to go. Here comes Mike. Into the ball game, Bo Rather comes up. Mike, another senior, and another Ohio product from Cincinnati. Michigan has some great Cincinnati alumni on this team. Shuttlesworth, Sippa, Oldham. Second down and five yards to go. Again, the Wolverines in the wishbone, and it is faked to the first man through, given to Dowdy, and he scampers his way up close to the 35-yard line, which would be a first down. Cypher tripped him up. Now we'll watch to see, and it is a first down for Michigan. At their own 35, and as we have a moment, let's quickly pause 10 seconds for station identification. You can hear the chant below, let's go blue, and Larry Sippa asked him to keep it down just a little bit as the handoff is given to Shuttlesworth, and he is hit after a yard gain to the 36-yard line on a great driving tackle by the middle guard of the Buckeyes, Vic Cagle. He was quickly assisted by Randy Grandishar. Both sophomores. The Buckeyes now are stacking that defense very, very tight in there. It's a little rough for the Michigan offensive line to move out a couple of people. They've got their uh, Ohio linebackers stacked right behind the front five, and that's awfully tough for an offensive line to deal with, and Michigan may have to throw the ball. They've thrown it so far only two times in this ball game, and Larry Sippa on the fake keeps it himself, rolls around the right side of the 40 to the 45. He's up in the 50s in Ohio State territory at the 49-yard line. Dragged down by Carl Kern and Randy Grandishard. Beautiful faking by Larry Sippa, faking to Shuttlesworth off the right side. He followed the big fella right through the hole. Mike Oldham coming out of there. Bo Rather going in. Again, we'll repeat, if you didn't hear it earlier, Tom Slade was shaken up in the first quarter. Sippa came in, played a lot of the second quarter. Slade came back in, but Sippa is starting the third. Pitch out to Taylor around the right side of the 50, the 45. He's pulled down. And the sun is with us for the first time this afternoon, and that's the reason for the roar from the crowd. Rich Capital made the stop on that last play. Michigan on top of Ohio State, 3 to nothing. 
Nine minutes to go in this third quarter, and bright sunshine on this crowd of over 104,000, the largest crowd in collegiate football history. And they have seen themselves again this afternoon. Wishbone T. Sippa gives it to Dowdy, and he is hit on a bruising tackle at the line of scrimmage by Cagle and Grandishar. They had that play diagnosed. They shunted the would-be blockers aside and met Dowdy standing up for no gain. So it is third down and six. And now let's see if Sippa does go to the air. Bo Rather is in Oldham up. Right, Tom. Again, I'll have to uh, mention that that Ohio State defense is stacked so tightly that uh, they'll just have to throw the ball or come wide as Sippa did the last time to loosen it up. It's Rather to the left side out of the I formation. Sippa is going back to pass, gets some time to throw, throws it down the middle, and he's got it and then dropped it. At the 33-yard line, Paul Seymour had it and has slid it away from him. As he was falling, I believe we could see that football drop down to the turf. Seymour quickly scooped it up. Well, a lot of boos around the stadium. They thought that Seymour had that ball, but as you mentioned, we could see it pretty well from up here, and also uh, no protest from Seymour. He knew he lost yeah. the football, but a well-thrown ball by Sippa, Tom. He had a man open, and he drilled it. So Barry Datsauer will come back into the ball game to punt for Michigan. He'll have this wind to his back. Although, as Dave mentioned, it has diminished quite a bit from the early stages of the game. He rides a beauty out of there. Fair catch called for, but the ball will hitting the wind of the end zone as Campana called for the fair catch, but the kick sailed well over his head and into the end zone. A 45-yard boot, and now Ohio State will put it in play at their own 20. Time for the second time in a row. We mentioned before Glenn Dowdy down covering punts, making such a great effort. Boy, here's a guy who's carried the ball time and time again this afternoon. He's been the workhorse for Michigan's offense and the really uh, big gun, if you can call it that, here this afternoon. But covering that kick, he was all the way down the field, another 50-yard sprint, and he's just a great hustler. Reminds you an awful lot of Michigan's Ron Johnson. We notice now that Don Eaton is back into the game replacing Mike Keller, who was injured early in this third quarter. The handoff is given to the fullback Rick Galvos up the middle to about the 22-yard line. Tom Beckman, the first to meet him, joined by Greg Ellis. I do not see uh, Keller down here right now, or if he is having any attention given to him. He was limping badly as he came off. It looked as though he was his right ankle, or perhaps foot. Second down and eight yards to go. The wishbone tee for the Buckeyes. Lamka turns, keeps it himself, rolls up off the left side, and he's got about... Four, maybe, to the 26-yard line, where he was hit by Fred Grambo, the junior from Hasadik. I'll show you how tight these defensive units are operating right now, both Michigan and Ohio. That time, Lampka didn't really have time to develop a play back there. Michigan closed so quickly that uh, Lampka actually gained some good yardage on a blown play. He snuck it through there and had some pretty good blocking up front, but the uh, defense and the linebackers are really stacked tight for both clubs, and that causes a quarterback to operate very tough. Ohio State sending Jimmy Harris wide to the left side for the first time as they give it off to Galbus again on the belly series and Galbus is short of a first down at the 28 yard line where Beckman and Key hit him. Jimmy Harris, the fastest man on this Ohio State team, has not been used as a flanker very much this afternoon. He can run the 109-4. Tom, you'll notice now on two occasions Ohio State has been stopped and they have chosen to uh, stay on the ground and try to pull off that first down rather than go to the air and risk a mistake. If Michigan got on top 10 to nothing after an interception, it would really put the Buckeyes in a hole. But they're patient. They're waiting, waiting for that big break. Darden and Elliott are deep at the 35 as Gary Lago gets his punt away. This is a spinning kick. Comes down to Elliott at the 38, and he's pulled down immediately. Down there quickly to make the tackle was Morris Bradshaw. Halftime score, Northwestern 21, Michigan State nothing. The Wildcats conceivably could finish in second place, which would be their best finish since 1948. 34-yard punt that time by Lago. No run back by Elliott. He was hit immediately. Ball placed at the 39-yard line, first and 10 for Michigan. And the quarterback, I believe Tom Slade, has returned to the lineup, or is it Larry Sippa? Yeah, we'll have to check it as he turns around. It is Sippa. They give it off to the second man through Glenn Dowdy, and Dowdy has a tough three yards up to about the 42-yard line, running off his own left side, stopped by the right side of that Ohio State forward wall, Vic Cagle and Randy Grandishar. Tom Fritz Seifert in there now for Michigan at the uh, fullback slot. A little more blocking power, but remember, if Michigan tries to uh, nose it out here against Ohio, I mentioned that 
uh, defense is so tight in there, they're going to have to maybe throw the ball a little bit earlier, maybe on second down rather than waiting till third. From the wishbone, it is faked by Sippa on the option play around the right side. He keeps it himself, and he is hit from the side. Knocked down at the 43-yard line by Rich Cappell. Clock shows 5.30 to go in this third quarter. Michigan leading 3 to nothing. In a tough defensive battle here this afternoon before 104,000 plus. Another pattern that would be uh, useful for the Wolverines possibly at this point is a little swing pattern to Billy Taylor rather than trying to go down and out uh, too deep just to toss it off to Taylor. Two wide receivers. Dowdy split right, rather left, back to Pasco Sippa. Looking to the sideline. Fires it and you had it. They tried to swing it out to Taylor, but it was thrown just a little low and Taylor couldn't catch up with it. First period score, Illinois 8, Iowa nothing. Tom Ohio had that diagnosed very, very well. He swung out there and stayed with Taylor. And actually, I think if the ball had been thrown on target, Ohio might have had a touchdown because uh, the Buckeyes were closing in very fast on Billy. And I think they could have intercepted that thing and certainly would have gone untouched had they grabbed the ball. The Buckeyes now are dropping three men back. As Barry Datsauer will be punting from his own 35-yard line, he rides a high one out of there. Again, it's a beauty. Campana feels it at the 11, comes straight up the field to the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30. This guy can go to the 40, the 45, the 50. Dowdy's the only one back there, and he knocks him out of bounds at the Michigan 39-yard line. There is a flag back up the field. Hold everything. Tom, I saw that one coming. Reggie McKenzie was clipped very, very badly downfield. It was just too obvious. Reggie stood right there. <laughs> He's talking to the referee right now. I saw that occur, and I saw the flag. The referee was about two seconds late getting the flag out of his pocket. You were too busy watching Campana. He's a great runner, and that was actually a very, very tough break for Ohio because that was another fine run by Campana, but Reggie was just decked from behind. There was no question about it, and that, that had to be a very, very dumb play by Ohio because the guy that clipped uh, McKenzie was way out of the play. Reggie was five yards away from Campana when the uh, clip actually behind Campana when the clip was made. So a big break for Michigan there and certainly a severe break for Ohio. Now the Wolverine defense can really put the blocks to the Buckeyes and uh, get them in trouble right here at the nine-yard line. They're having a little trouble with a chain over on the far side. They haven't got it placed yet. That's the reason for the delay. So instead of having the ball at the Michigan 39, first and 10, they have it shy of their own 10-yard line, first and 10. Dave, the sun right now, which is with us, is great for the fans, but it becomes a little bit of a problem now for the players going to that south end zone because it is low in the sky now here, latter part of November, and you're looking right into it. From the wishbone, it's kept by Gnapka, and he isn't going anywhere. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, but Carpenter fell on him. Already in there to meet him, however, was Fred Grambo. Talk about the guys we're going to lose, the guys we're going to have back. Fred Grambo is one of them. In fact, he is going to be the only uh, returning man outside of Craig Ellis who alternates with Dave Gallagher. Gallagher is another great one who will be back. Second down, still 10, and this time it's given off to the left halfback, Elmer Lippert, and he has maybe a couple up to the 12-yard line. Running straight ahead on a quick opener off the left side of that Ohio State line led by Milan McKansky and Jim Craigle. That's got to be the most difficult assignment in the world is to run against this Michigan defense in situations like this. You can't gamble. You can't even go wide. You don't want to force any kind of a mistake in your offensive backfield. And they've got to come straight at this Michigan defense, and it's just tough out there. Bill Swisher has him with 58 yards. That is Ohio State with 58 yards on the ground so far in this ball game. Again, it's the wishbone, and this time Lamka keeps it. He's going to run with the ball himself. He comes over the 15 to the 16-yard line, but again, that is way short of a first down. Pulled down by Tom Key and Mike Taylor, two linebackers. So this means that Ohio State will have to give up the football again with 3.30 to go in this third quarter. Michigan holding on to a tenuous 3 to nothing lead on Dana Coyne's field goal with 5.19 to go in the second quarter from 32 yards out. Time Ohio's had three high snaps from the center now. They'll have to settle this one down and get it away because Michigan can put on a rush. Good snap this time to Lagos, and it's a bad kick, a swift kick off to the right, and will go out of bounds at about the Ohio State 35-yard line. I think that Lago was a little bit worried about that Michigan rush that you spoke of as they had both ends streaming in there. He may have took his eye off the football just for a moment. 
And in that time, he squibbed one off to the right after he's been doing a tremendous job in punting this afternoon. That he has, Tom. He's been just superb out here under actually more pressure than that because the snaps, as I mentioned, had been high on three or four other occasions, and he got the ball away very well. That time he had a perfect snap and blew it. 17-yard punt. Here's Sippa's pitch out to Dowdy around the left side. He's tripped up at the 35-yard line by Ken Lutner. He fell forward up to... Let's see where they mark it. The 30, well, close to the 33-yard line. So, actually, a gain of maybe a one. Third, second down and nine. Well, we've seen Michigan try to move the ball here three times in the second half, and they have not gone to the air, as I mentioned, on that early down to try and surprise the Buckeyes and loosen them up. They keep that uh, hard-nosed game, that running game going, and the Buckeyes have been equal to it each, on each occasion, so we'll see what they do now. Well, Sip is going back to put the ball in the air. He fires it, and it is incomplete. Almost a diving reception by Bo Rather down to the 10-yard line. The crowd roars. They thought maybe Rather might have been interfered with by Rick Seifert, but no way, says the official. Michigan on the ground so far this afternoon has picked up over 200 yards, 204 yards, but they have been grudging yards, and when they have actually needed them, they haven't been there, as this Ohio State defense has been equal to the task. Here's Oldham checking in, Tom. Third and nine. He's going to split out to the right. You mentioned against Purdue last week. He had a good down-and-out pattern. I think the Wolves will have to throw it again. And joining him out there in the slot is Glenn Dowdy. As Sippa is back to pass, he's looking to Oldham. He fires a long one for Oldham. He falls down, and the flag goes down at the five-yard line. Let's see who it's against. Remember, it could be on either Oldham or Ohio State. And I believe that they're going to tag it against Mike Oldham. That is it. Offensive pass interference. Oldham and the defender Rick Seifert were step for step. Oldham went down. But it could have been that the official ruled that Oldham has interfered with Seifert before he dropped down. And that brings the ball all the way back to the 49 of Ohio State. Boy, you'd have to see that one again, Tom, to call it. No question about how close it was. It went, uh, you know, either way on a collision like that. But if, if the uh, Ohio State back had a crack at intercepting that ball and Oldham knocked him down, that's exactly what had to occur for that kind of penalty. So the Buckeyes get a break right back. That's right, because if it's a loss of down also, an offensive pass interference, so it's fourth and long yardage, and Barry Dotsauer will be punting for the Wolverines. He just gets it away as he spun that one up over Charlie Beecroft. It's fielded by Tom Campana back at the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40. He may be gone. He's got Dots out to beat, and he's around him to the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, to the 10. He's going in. Touchdown, Ohio State. portion of this 104,000 are going slightly berserk over on the far side as Tom Campana fielding that punt. Back on about the 15-yard line, we would guess, taking it about 85 yards. 85-yard run back by Campana. Putting Ohio State on top here. And now the Buckeyes have called for a timeout as they're going to talk something else over here. So, a timeout on the field with a score. Ohio State 6, Michigan 3. What a fantastic run by Tom Campana. We mentioned, boy, he had broken a couple of plays, had that one call back, and he's just a great runner. Dotsauer had a shot at him. But I'll tell you, he put a move on Dotsauer that looked like uh, Gordy Howe on a penalty shot. I'll tell you, he just blew right by Dotsauer. Never had a chance and just completely sprinted away from the rest of the Michigan ball club. A tremendous run. One of the greatest I think I've ever seen in Michigan Stadium, Tom. Tremendous. But uh, I think uh, remember in 1969, a great punt run back by... Uh, I believe it was Healy of Michigan. Was that I right? I was going to say Barry Pearson. Barry Pearson, that's right, it was. It broke that ball game wide open. So it's that kind of an afternoon out here, and uh, Michigan's offense now will be really under pressure to get something going. We've had a 
try for the extra point now by Fred Schrem. It was good. However, Ohio State guilty of illegal procedure, which means they will have to do it again. And this time it will be from five yards further out. Tom Campana, 85-yard punt return. And now Ohio State can go on top. 7-3 to three should Schramm boot it through once again. This time it is up. And it is good. The clock shows 2.07. Remaining in this third quarter, and the Buckeyes have taken a 7-3 to three lead over the Wolverines. Wolverines who have been able to move the football this afternoon until they get inside that Ohio State 30-yard line and then the going gets tough have been able to come up with anything of the touchdown variety so far this afternoon and had to settle for a field goal by Dana Coy. Now have their work cut out for them. Might keep in mind that all year long Michigan's biggest strength has come in the fourth quarter. They have outscored their opponents 122 to 22 in that fourth quarter, and they're going to need it today. This is a fighting mad, tough Ohio State team. And here comes the kickoff by Stan White. It's a high kick, fielded by Bo Rather back on the 12. Comes up the field to the, 50, to the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, the 28 yard line. He fielded it on the 8. I said the 12. So Michigan will have it first and 10, and let's see where they spot it. At the 20, well, about the 28-yard line. Carl Kern made the stop on Bo Rather. Clock shows just over two minutes to go in this third quarter. Power eye to the left side. Both ends are tight. As Larry Sippa gives it off to, it, to Fritz Seifert. And Seifert is up to about the 32-yard line. Where he is hauled down. By three or four Buckeyes, first in on the tackle was White. He was joined by Cagle and Grandishar. Here comes Curtis Tucker checking in at that strong side tackle position, replacing Jim Brandstatter for Michigan. Again, it's the power eye, strong to the right side. Second down and six yards to go with both ends tight. Sippa pitches out to Taylor around the left side. The short side comes to the 30, the 35, and he is belted by Randy Grandishar at the 35-yard line. That'll be short of a first down, getting up slowly. Jim Coote, who has sat out a couple of games because of an injury, but he's getting back in there. He's the quick tackle for Michigan, and he's a good one. That Buckeye defense now coming up with that super play that keeps Michigan in trouble on third down, third and four. You can flip a coin now to know whether Michigan's going to run or throw that football. It's uh, anybody's call out there. Third down and four yards to go, and Sippa is rolling to the left side. He's going to fire it, and it is overthrown intended for Mike Oldham. Looked as if that ball was tipped. Could have been, Dave. Sippa threw it. I couldn't quite catch. Uh, looked like number 78 for Ohio. Got his big hand up there and knocked that ball away. Just a good defensive rush again by Ohio there. Buckeye fans over here in the uh, northeast corner of the end zone are just going crazy out here with the Ohio State team in the lead, 7-3. Michigan's got to kick it away. Remember, Dotsauer nearly had one block just moments ago, and that would really change this ballgame completely around. So Dotsauer will be punting, and he oh. really rides a beauty out of there this time, driving Campana back to the 12-yard line, back to the 15. He comes to the 20, to the 25, and that's all he's going to get this time. He was pulled down by Billy Taylor got down there to make sure that he wasn't going to take one back this time. And if Michigan can contain Ohio right now in the first three plays of this series, boy, you've got to look back at that punt by Dotsauer. He really boomed that thing way, way deep in the Ohio State territory, and that just gives this Michigan defense all the break in the world to keep the heat on because they're very much in the ball game, and they have been the outfit that has really given the Wolverines the breaks all year long, so we'll see what they can do right now. 53-yard punt by Dotsauer that time. High formation for the Buckeyes. First and 10. They're placing it at their own 26-yard line. Pitch out goes to Lippert. Skirts one man, dives over another, and he's up to about the 30-yard line. Darden and Logan coming over to make the stop for Michigan. The clock shows 20 seconds to go, and it's running. They may not get another play underway here in this third quarter. You look at the statistics, and they're completely overbalanced for Michigan. You look at the scoreboard, 
And it's the other story. Ohio State leading. Ohio State on the ground. Three quarters have picked up 66 yards compared to Michigan's 211. And the time continues to tick, and that is the end of the third quarter. With a score, Ohio State 7, Michigan 3. All set for fourth quarter action now. The flag goes down in the first play from scrimmage as they give it off to Galbos around the right side, but a flag was thrown at the line of scrimmage. Then the 30-yard line. Buckeyes had it second and six. Illegal procedure call against the Buckeyes. Let's see what Michigan does with it right now. Other scores this afternoon. Wisconsin 7, Minnesota 7, now a halftime score. Arkansas leading Texas Tech 3 to nothing after a half. North Carolina State 17, Clemson 10 after a half. Dartmouth shutting out Princeton 26 to nothing after three quarters. Missouri nothing, Kansas nothing after a quarter. The penalty was declined by Michigan to keep the down box moving around. It'll be third down and four at the 32-yard line. High formation for the Buckeyes. Dick Wheatfield heads wide to the left side is the only wide man. From the eye, Lamka goes back and gives it off on the draw to the tailback, and Galbus is stacked at the 33-34 yard line by Key and Beckman. As we get into the fourth quarter of action now in an absolutely super ball game, these two teams have been playing football against each other since 1897, and boy, this has got to be one of the best ball games that's ever been played. They're just hitting out here like you've never seen and just tremendous even play out here. Campana's run the only big break of the afternoon. And Ohio will have to kick it away now. Here's Gary Lago. Gets his punt away and he just gets it away and a flag goes down as Lago was hit by Eaton. Fair catch called for by Tom Darden but Lago was brushed by Eaton as he went by him and uh, roughing the kicker is going to be called against Michigan and that will give the Buckeyes a first down and a big break here. Well, as is so often the case, that roughing the kicker penalty is a hairline decision whether the on-rushing uh, linesman actually hits the fellow or whether he carries it off very well. Sometimes you really have to go back and look at the film to check. But in that particular case, Lago went to the ground, and the 15-yard walk-off against Michigan takes it up close to the 50-yard line, and the Buckeyes have it first and 10. Wakefield heads wide to the left side. Galbos and Leopard are lined up in the eye. It goes to Galbos, and he stopped at the line of scrimmage. Fred Grambo the first to reach him. Tom Beckman there. Well, as Michigan defense has done their job this afternoon, you can't fault them. Not at all, Tom. A couple of breaks, as you mentioned. Uh, penalty situations have turned this ball game around, and that uh, kicking, uh, roughing the kicker penalty, as you say, there's many times a little bit of theatrics in there, but referees are right on top of that play. Boy, it's hard to argue with him. That guy called the play. He was about five feet away when Eaton uh, knocked the uh, punter down. Second down and about nine. And Lamka gives it off in the draw play to his tailback Leopard, and he doesn't find anywhere to go. He is hit at the 50-yard line by an angry swarm of Wolverines with Tom Beckman coming off the bottom of that pile. And Butch Carpenter. You know, from Michigan's point of view here, too, uh, they have to get that ball quickly because they want to put on that long, sustained drive to uh, try and get on the scoreboard, and uh, they just can't let the Ohio team control that football many more plays here in the fourth quarter. Ohio State leading 7-3. to three. Lamka on third and nine. Let's see if he goes to the air. He gives it off in a draw play to Galbos, and Michigan stops him at the 47-yard line. Greg Ellis and Fred Grambo smelled that one coming and were there to make the tackle. Fred Grambo has played himself a whale of a game this afternoon, a defensive tackle for Michigan. Now, Dave Gallagher checking in now for Michigan at the defensive tackle spot, and, of course, he will tell Mike Taylor whether or not Michigan wants a punt rush or a return on at this point. It's my guess that it'll probably be a return. You'll recall against Michigan State, the same incident happened. It gave Michigan State new life, and they went in for a touchdown. This time, not much of a rush on. As Lago going for the coffin corner, rides one out, but a fair catch called for by Elliott. Down on about the nine-yard line of Michigan. So they're going to be backed into their territory to start this drive. When Elliott fielded that punt, there were about five Buckeyes right around him, ready to cover any kind of a fumble situation. So they're right in this ball game very much. And the Ohio State defense has actually been the big factor in this ballgame, Tom. They have done something 
thing that uh, a lot of people thought they couldn't do, that stopped Michigan's offense. They've done it now for three quarters. Larry Sippa back in there at quarterback. We have no word on Tom Sling. Power eye, strong to the left side. Sippa turns and gives it off to Billy Taylor. He's hauled down from behind after he moved up to about the 13-yard line. Grandishar, the first to reach him for the Buckeyes. And this crowd, which has roared themselves hoarse over the first three quarters, right now setting up the cry, let's go blue. Second down and seven. The Wolverines trying for their first unbeaten season since 1948, trailing 7-3. Just into the fourth quarter, as Sippa pitches out to Doughty around the short side of the 15, and he's up and knocked out of bounds at about the 20, and that would be enough for a first down. Chased out over there by Rick Seifert, and that is enough for a first down. Michigan in the first down category this afternoon has picked up 14. Ohio State has been held to five. Another great effort by Doughty on that sweep to the left side. Now watch time when they line up, as I mentioned, the Ohio State linebackers being in there so tight. This is almost an impossible situation for an offensive line to cope with. You're actually blocking about nine guys right up front. Mike Oldham is heading wide to the right side, and this time they're going to set up in the wishbone tee. And the handoff is given to Fritz Seifert, and the senior from Darien, Connecticut, drives forward up to about the 24-yard line. Seifert and White in on the tackle. Of course, this is Michigan's bread and butter right now. Grind it out, push it up the field. They have not been able to do it deep in Ohio State territory today. That's exactly right, Tom. The uh, patient offensive drive, not getting rattled, not getting... Uh, restless out there trying to go for big bombs and throwing the ball game away. They'll just try and grind it out. That time to Cypher. He lines up again as uh, Michigan goes with the wishbone. And Bo rather wide to the right side on second and five. It's kept on the option by Sipper around the right side. He pitches back to Taylor at the 30 and he's pulled down up to the 34 yard line and a flag is thrown as two other Buckeyes pile down. The initial stop was made by Ken Luckner. Two other Buckeyes came over and jumped down, and that is going to cost them 15 yards up to the 50-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for Michigan. Now that penalty piling on had to come somewhere along a ball game like this, but a rough, tough ball game. They weren't that late piling on that time, the Ohio State Club, but the referee again right on the spot. He called it, and uh, a break for Michigan, but it's been a rough ball game. You've got to have a penalty like that once in a while. Mike Golden is in, split wide to the left side, first and ten. The ball is given to the fullback, Seifert. He finds a little bit of a hole up the middle, and he's down to about the 48 of Ohio State. I don't have any uh, word, Tom, as to the absence of Ed Shuttlesworth in the lineup. He is standing on the sidelines, apparently healthy and uh, ready to play ball, but Seifert has been in there, I believe, throughout the second half. Vic Cagle over to make the tackle. Yeah, I believe that Seifert did come in after about the first two series of plays for Michigan. And he's running now to the wishbone tee, second and eight. The pitch out goes to Taylor around the right side, and he is hit on a great tackle at the 50-yard line. Randy Grandishaw came over there from his linebacker position to drop Taylor before he could start to move around the corner. From behind, Tom, great speed by the Ohio State linebacker. He just caught up with Taylor before the play could develop. Now third and ten. They're going to uh, put Sippa under some pressure as he's got to probably go to the air. And now Glenn Dowdy is coming out of there. So let's check the backfield now as Bo Rather goes wide to the left side. They're going to employ two tight ends and the flanker is Rather. And Sippa is going to put the ball in the air. It's back to pass he goes. He floats one down the middle and Cypher could come up with it. He almost had a one-handed reception at the 42 which still would have been short of a first down. As they threw to the short man coming out of the backfield, and that means Michigan will have to give up the football. Right, Ohio State played that pattern deep back there. They were in a pass prevent defense, and they went back into the first down territory. They didn't care if Michigan got six yards on that pass play or seven yards. It was that ten yards that they were protecting against, and they did it perfectly. Now Dotsauer will try to pound this down there and put the Buckeyes deep. He'll be punting from his own 40. Low pass from center, but Barry gets it away. Hits on the 10, goes to the 5, and it's going to make it into the end zone. So they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line to put it in play, first and 10 for the Buckeyes. And time now shows 9.33 remaining in this ball game, and the Buckeyes hold a 7-3 lead over Michigan on an 85-yard punt return by Tom Campano.
it seems as though each time we've uh, put the ball back in play, Tom, it's been the same set of circumstances. Michigan's defense having to come up with a super effort to uh, contain the Buckeyes, get the ball back for the offense, and they've been up to it here in the second half on the last three occasions. It's the eye formation for Ohio State. As Don Lamka gives up to, no, fakes it around the bootleg, fires it upfield on Wakefield. He's got it, and he's out of bounds at the 30. Great faking by Don Lamka. He put that ball on his hip, slid around the right side, fired to Wakefield, who was wide open at the 30-yard line where he went out of bounds. And they're checking it right now to see if it is a first down. And I'll bet Wakefield would like to have that play back, Tom. He didn't realize it, but he was so wide open, he could have turned up field for plenty of yards. He might have broken that play wide open, but he ran it out of bounds. That's all he wanted was the first down, and he did it perfectly. Well, he ended up just inches short of a first down. Stepped out just before the 30. Tom Batista's checked in there. No, he's getting out of there now. They're going to go with a full house in the backfield. Both ends tight. Needless to say, needing just a couple of inches for the first down. They give it off to the fullback, Randy Keefe, and he's got a first down up to about the 32 before he is thrown back by five Wolverines. That pass play now on first down for Ohio, that is a, that's the thing that's got to catch a defense napping because Lampka faked so well rolling out to the right side that uh, Michigan followed everybody in the backfield except the quarterback who had not kept the ball on uh, many occasions here in the whole ball game, but he faked it so well through downfield and caught Michigan off guard. Now they have more or less an easy first down to put it back into play. Here's Wakefield flanking to the left side with the eye formation behind Lamka, and he gives it off to the tailback in the draw. No, keeps it himself around the left side, and he is not spinning at the 34-yard line. Another great fake by Lamka. Mike Taylor was over to make the stop along with Butch Carpenter. Well, they used to say the wretch Kern, one of the great magicians of college football, he faked beautifully, but Lampka has come up here in the second half with some dazzling ball handling. And, of course, too, second and eight now, Lampka has a little more room to throw that ball, picking up that uh, crucial first down that moved the ball forward for Ohio. But if he floats that thing again, look out for Michigan because he hasn't put the ball into the air with a lot of authority. But by the other, on the other hand, he hasn't been uh, hit an awful lot this afternoon when he's been back there deep. Second and eight. The handoff is fake. This time, Lamka keeps it, and he goes nowhere. Stacked up at the line of scrimmage by Taylor. Now, quickly, let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is the University of Michigan Broadcasting Service. As I mentioned, in a passing situation now for Ohio, third and seven, we have not seen Tom Beckman put the rush on. We haven't seen a lot of people that normally were very strong in pass rush, effective for Michigan this afternoon. Well, they're going to give it off to the right halfback. Bradshaw, who comes up to about the 40-yard line, which would be short of a first down. And Frank Gussick was over there to make the stop. Ohio State players kind of hoping to go for it, but Woody Hayes having nothing of that. As the ball resting at the 41, just about a yard short of a first down. And now Michigan will get their hands on the football again. Well, let's make believers out of this punting situation now because this guy Bradshaw is lined up behind the ball. And uh, the punter is much deeper. Lago standing at his 30. Gets his punt away. It's a high kick, not too far this time. And a fair catch call for by Bruce Elliott. Right at the 28-yard line. And I'll tell you, that took a little bit of uh, intestinal fortitude to grab that ball with... Four or five Buckeyes standing around him. That it did, Tom. He has handled that ball completely uh, with authority this afternoon. Very clean on all of those tight plays. As you mentioned, he's been surrounded every time he's handled the ball. And will you notice this? They have not kicked to Darden. 31-yard punt that time in Michigan. Larry Sippick still going at quarterback. We haven't seen Slade in the second half. From the eye formation... Sippa takes the snap and pitches out to Taylor around the left side. Cuts to uh, 25, comes back to the 30, and he is upended at the 31-yard line by Harry Howard. The clock now shows less than seven minutes to go. Michigan trailing Ohio State 7-3. to three. The Michigan power sweep, Billy Taylor, all year long. He's broken every record in the book for the Wolverines. It has not been effective this afternoon. Ohio screams it out. They, they give him a little bit of running room to the sideline and then close in very quickly, and they tackle securely. He hasn't broken many tackles this afternoon. Second down and seven. They're going to go out of the wishbone with Bo Rather's foot to the right side. 
Sippa fakes to the first man, fakes to the second, back to pass. He goes, arches a long one down here for Seymour, and he can't catch up to it. Seymour was in the open at the 35-yard line of Ohio State and couldn't come up with a football just a little over his outstretched hands. And you talk about faking. Sippa put a couple of pretty good fakes on Seifert and Taylor that time. And then arched a long one down here at just inches long. All right, on another occasion when Michigan went back uh, to pass on second down, it wasn't effective. They came back with the third down pass. They tried to swing it out to Billy Taylor on the short pattern. It was poorly thrown, but it might be something we look for here now. Oldham's wide to the right, down to the left. They give it off in the draw to Taylor, and he squirms up to the 40-yard line or the 39, and it's going to be very close to a first down. From here, I'd say he's got it. Let's put it this way, Tom. It's close enough to gamble. Yes, it is. And the officials may have to measure. And it looks as though they're going to go over and get the chains right now. He was dragged down at the 39-yard line. Well, if we had to put our post-game hot dog on it, I'd say that he's got it. Yes, he has. Clock shows 6.08 remaining in this ball game. First and 10 for Michigan. They're at their own 39-yard line. That's the first time in the second half of action time there's been that much of a letdown in the Ohio State defense. And by a letdown, Taylor broke about three tackles. Power line to the backfield. Strong to the right side. Fritz Seifert sticking in there at fullback along with tailback Billy Taylor. And it's pitched out to Taylor. He looks at the line, comes back to the 40, puts his head down and drives up to about the 43-yard line following Jim Coody and Reggie McKenzie. They'll throw it in at the 43-yard line. This is the key drive, Tom, as that clock keeps moving now. 5.37 left in the ballgame. Michigan won't get too many other occasions to put any kind of an offensive uh, drive in motion. They've got to do it right now. Second down and six yards to go. Both ends are tucked. Power eye strong to the right side. They give it off to Seifert, and Seifert bangs his way up to about the 45-yard line. That'll make it third and four. Brandeshauer and Hassanall. Indiana now leading Purdue 31 to 17 after three quarters. All right, here's Rather checking back in for Dowdy, definitely a pass receiver for Michigan. He'll be splitting out to the left now as Sippa brings the ball club up. That big third down play again. 4.50 remaining in the ballgame. Sippa fakes the draw. Back to pass. He goes. Looking downfield. He fires for Rather. He's got it at the 40 of Ohio State. Turns upfield to the 35. He's knocked out of bounds at the 33-yard line by Seifert. Give Larry Sippa about two bushels and a half worth of credit right there as he faked that draw to Taylor, and he caught Ohio State off guard. He fired it to Rather, who was open at the 35. He took it to the 33, and it's Michigan's ball first and 10. And, of course, there's no question about it. Michigan needs the touchdown. A field goal would bring them within 7-6 uh, to six of Ohio, so they've got to go all the way. It takes that question mark right off the map. Rather coming wide to the right side, working out of the wishbone team. The handoff is faked by Sipper around the right side. He's going to keep it and go to the 35. He stiff arms one man, and he's knocked down at the 30-yard line. Seifert again coming over to make the stop on Seifert. Now we are to on uh, Sippa. Remember, of course, in the fourth quarter, Michigan's main strength has been because of the opposition being worn down on defense. And this Ohio State defense, which has been sensational, doesn't look as though they are they are worn at all. Of course, Ohio State known for their shape. Tom, here's a, a big factor in the ball game. A very well rested and rugged Ed Shuttlesworth has checked into the ball game for Michigan. Now Seifert coming out, and he is a pullback and he's Go. Maybe you've just answered your own question as to why he has not been in before on second and seven. It's given off to Billy Taylor, and he squirms down to about the 28-yard line. Clock running, and we now have under four minutes to go. Grandishar and Seifert in on the tackle of Taylor. Clock shows 3.45. Michigan trailing Ohio State 7-3. to three. In a ball game, certainly, that has been all that it was cracked up to be. Two tight ends checking in. Oldham flanking out to the left and seal, Tom, so they'll probably stay right on the ground. And this crowd is coming to its feet. 104,000 strong out of the eye formation. Larry Sippa barking out the signals, pitches deep to Tilted Taylor. Cuts around the left side. He gets away from one man. Goes down to the 25. He's close to the 23-yard line and close to a first down. 
Stan White was over to meet him for Ohio State. And now let's see if we're going to need another measurement. Tom, the referees have not stopped the clock here while they measure the football, and they should definitely have that clock stopped. Well, they aren't going to measure. It's down to the 24-yard line. It's just about a half yard short of a first down on fourth down. Well, Michigan should definitely call a timeout in this situation, Tom. That clock is running. They're going to need this time. They're still 24 yards away. 2.45 showing on the clock. Seifert is back in. Shuttlesworth is out. Sippert. Waiting for the snap from center. Takes it, gives it off to Seifert. He's got a first down to the 21-yard line. First and 10 for Michigan. Now they stop the clock to reset the chains. 234 remaining in the ball game and of course that, that was a tough decision because they used about 35 or 40 seconds on that previous uh, series and that's an awful lot of time right now and Cypher coming through with the big play here comes Bo Rather out to the right side Cypher and Taylor are lined up in the eye behind Sippa who's ready for the snap he takes it on the option play. Heads down the line of scrimmage. Switches back to Taylor on the right side. The 20. He's got blocking out in front of the 15. The 10. The 5. Touchdown, Michigan! They're mobbing Billy Taylor. This place has gone hog wild. The Michigan bench is screaming. They are throwing helmets. They are jumping up and down. Billy Taylor has been mobbed in the end zone. As one, they needed him. The greatest rusher that Michigan has ever known delivered. And I'll tell you, he had some guys out in front of him knocking people down. I have never seen this place so wild. Even the day that they beat Ohio State when nobody expected them to. The clock shows 2.07 remaining in this ball game. Now they're trying to restore some semblance of order here for Dana Coyne to kick the extra point, a most important extra point at that. Exactly right. The ball is placed down. It's up. It's good. Dana Coyne kicked his 54th straight. That was a 72-yard drive and 11 plays with Billy Taylor climaxing it with a 21-yard scoop around the right side for his 13th touchdown of the year, perhaps his final at Michigan Stadium. And there is no way I can convey to you the emotion here at Michigan Stadium right now and down on that field at the Michigan side. Something to remember, though. We still got to... Uh look out for the Ohio State offensive unit. They've got a guy named Campana. He took 185 yards to give Ohio State the lead for half of this ball game. And also Mr. Fred Schramm who could throw this ball game into a tie here in the closing minutes. 2.07 on the clock. Dana Coyne has it teed up on the 40. And the fellow you just spoke of, Tom Campana, has replaced Morris Bradshaw in a last second change by Woody Hayes at the five yard line, just as you were saying that. And here comes Dana Coyne's kickoff. It's a squibber. Trying to kick away from Campana. Rolls down and is picked up by Leopard at the 15-yard line. He's hit immediately by Tom Drake. Gets away from him. Comes up to the 25, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 29-yard line. <laughs> this game isn't over yet. Well, what's been the greatest season in Michigan history has certainly deserved a climax like this. And we have it. The clock shows 2.01 to go. 10 to 7, Michigan leading Ohio State. And if there's anybody sitting here in this stadium, I don't see him. It's not you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be alone up here. Single setback as Galvo says Lampke is going back to put the ball in the air. He's getting the time to throw. He's scrambling around now. He's firing it. It's complete to the 35, to the 40, to the 45, to the 50, and knocked out of bounds as Wakefield at the 45 of Michigan. Bruce Elliott over to knock him out of bounds, and Lamka squirming around in that backfield finally found Wakefield downfield, and he hit him. The clock shows a minute and 51 to go. Remember, Tom, I mentioned Fred Schramm has great range as a field goal kicker for Ohio State. One more first down or 10 or 15 more yards, and he is very, very much in the picture in this ballgame. And he has what wind is here at his back. 
Again, they employ a single setback. They have two split men right side. One split left, and Lamka is back to pass. He's being chased by Grambo. He fires a long one. It is caught, but he is out of bounds. Morris Bradshaw made the reception, but he was out of bounds when he did it. So they'll bring it back, make it second and ten at the Michigan 45. Clock shows a minute and 46 seconds remaining. The Rose Bowl bound Wolverines trying to win their 11th straight. The Ohio State Buckeyes trying to stop them. Back to pass goes Lamka. Get some time. Now he's being chased. Now he's being dropped. 49 yard line of Michigan coming through there. Greg Ellis and Fred Grambo along with Tom Beckman. All right, not a bad play now by Lampka. He didn't have an awful lot of uh, option out there. He had to eat the football, but by the same token, he, he decided not to put that ball in the air. As I mentioned, if they can get somebody over the middle about the 30-yard line, they can put themselves in field goal range. Rather than trying to throw it all away that time, Michigan was covering very, very well downfield, and he chose to eat that football, and really a very cool play, Tom, on Lampka's part. He could have thrown that thing into the seats and it would have gone for naught or possibly an interception by Michigan. So uh, the, he's still in the picture, and the Wolverines will have to watch that middle territory, that first down territory about the 35-yard line of Michigan. That's where the damage will be done if Ohio State can get anything going. But for the first time this afternoon, we've seen Beckman and Grambo and a few of those people in there on Lampville. He has had tremendous protection all afternoon. Actually, that's the first time I think he's been sacked all day long. It's the first time I can remember. And Dave, something you spoke of earlier, which has come to pass right now, Ohio State has used their last timeout. Remember, they took one earlier and they didn't have to. And now they are out of timeouts, and we still have a minute and 31 seconds to go in this ball game. It is third and 16 at the Ohio State 49. And that uh, that first timeout that they took, Tom, was on the first play of the second half. Not exactly a heady time to take a timeout. Here comes Tom Batista, wide to the left side. Ohio State is only going to employ one split man. This time it is fake. Lamka is back to pass. He fires it, and it is intercepted. Intercepted by Tom Darden. Holy mackerel, Tom Darden has come up with his second interception, and he's not giving the football up. The Ohio State Buckeyes are screaming that Darden interfered with a receiver. Woody Hayes is out on the field. He is screaming at the official who drops the flag, and I think Woody's going to get tagged with a 15-yard penalty here. He came out there claiming that Tom Darden interfered with the intended receiver, who I believe was Dick Wakefield, but don't, don't keep me at it. Woody is following the official up the field. He is not giving up. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes after him. He is screaming mad. Unsportsmanlike conduct called against Woody Hayes. He keeps it up. They'll do it again. That's right, Tom. They can move that thing right down the field. There's no, uh, no limit to the number that you can assess. But uh, by the same token, that was an absolutely outstanding interception by Darden. You didn't know whether he caught it or not. No, sir. Hesitated, but an outstanding interception. And, boy, this Ohio State club is just fighting mad right now. They played their hearts out. Now, that had that pass been completed or had it been interference against Michigan down there, it would have given the Buckeyes definite field goal position time. So Bucky, uh, Woody Hayes out there is definitely talking about the the results of this ball game and not just a particular play. Right now, his players are trying to get Woody off the field. He doesn't want to go. His players are trying to get him off the field before he does something rash, as they say at back tonight. 125 on the clock. Michigan leading 10 to 7 now. The Wolverines can get something going to run the clock out of about a minute and a half remaining. But uh, again, Tom, had that pass play gone against Michigan, an interference play, the penalty would have moved it very definitely into field goal range. So Woody Hayes is excited. He's upset because that would have meant a tie ball game, I think. Schramm is that good. He would have put it through from 25 yards out. But uh, so it's not just a temper outburst by Hayes. He knows what, you know, what in particular he's talking about. He's talking about a tie game rather than a defeat. With a minute and 25 to go, Dave, I wouldn't go within 10 yards of that field right now. This is all-out <laughs> war. From the wishbone tee, Sippa keeps it and falls down himself. And now Ohio State, remember, does not have a timeout left to stop the clock. Michigan can let that clock roll with ease, and it shows a minute and 10 and is running. 
at the 49 of the Wolverine. They just have to get a play underway every 25 seconds. And of course, they don't even have to gain any yards on that because mathematics show that two plays should be able to do it. Again, Larry Sippa waiting for the snap. He takes it and falls down once again. And on top of him come about five Buckeyes, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised. We see a flag. We will. And now, of course, both teams really steaming, and they're stepping into each other, and another 15-yard penalty is walked off against Ohio State. And Woody Hayes has grabbed the first down marker. He's thrown it onto the field. He's ripped up the chain. I'll tell you, the guy running the chain over there, He's grabbed another one. He's throwing that onto the field. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised they tag him with that. Glenn Dowdy says, what are you waiting for? And his players call him back into the huddle. I have never seen such an uproarious ending of any game in my life. The ball is down to the 35-yard line of Ohio State, which really doesn't mean much. I don't know what they're going to do it for a first down marker now. Woody ripped them both up. Well, I guess they've got the others set up there now. Well, we may get a delay a game here against Ohio as they bring a substitute in late. Of course, that gives Michigan a first down down at the 35-yard line, and Sippa, no doubt, will just keep the football and try to drop on it again on a long count. He does. Of course, he and Murdoch are getting their ears pounded you off. You better believe there. it. Clock shows 30 seconds and is running. Michigan could let the time run down and get a delay of game penalty here. It would be about five seconds. This crowd's starting to count already. What a fantastic end to a fantastic season. Clock shows nine, eight, seven, six, five. The fans are starting onto the field. Four, three, two, one. Zipper falls on the ball. The game is over. Michigan has defeated Ohio State 10 to 7, and Bedlam breaks loose on the field down below us. The hero of last Saturday's ball game against Purdue gets his foot into the ball. The ball goes up and through. Dana Coyne has given Michigan a 3 to nothing lead with 5.19 to go in this second quarter. Dana Coyne now with seven field goals out of 12 tries this year. And now 74 points to his credit. that drive of Michigan started on their own 20-yard line, and they moved it in 13 plays down until the Buckeye defense again was equal to the task of Dana Coy, booting it through to put the Wolverines on top, 3 to nothing. And now Coy will be kicking off. Deep for Ohio State. an appearance, so it's fourth and long yardage, and Barry Dotsar will be punting for the Wolverines. He just gets it away as he spun that one up over Charlie Beecroft. It's fielded by Tom Campana back at the 15, to the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35, the 40. He may be gone. He's got Dotsar to beat, and he's around him to the 30, to the 25, to the 20, to the 15, to the 10. He's going in. Touchdown, Ohio State. portion of this 104,000 are going slightly berserk over on the far side as Tom Campana fielding that punt back on about the 15 yard line we would guess taking it about 85 yards 85 yard run back by Campana putting Ohio State on top here and now the Buckeyes have called for a timeout as they're going to talk something else over here. So, a timeout on the field with a score. Ohio State 6, Michigan 3. What a fantastic run by Tom Campana. We mentioned, boy, he had broken a couple of plays, had that one call back, and he's just a great runner. Dotsar had a shot at him. 
but I'll tell you, he put a move on Dotsauer that looked like uh, Gordy Howe on a penalty shot. I'll tell you, he just blew right by Dotsauer, never had a chance, and just completely sprinted away from the rest of the Michigan ball club. A tremendous run, one of the greatest I think I've ever seen in Michigan Stadium, Tom. Tremendous. But uh, I think, uh, remember, in 1969, the great punt run back by... Uh, I believe it was Healy of Michigan. Was that I right? I was going to say Barry Pearson. Barry Pearson, that's right, it was. It broke that ball game wide open. So it's that kind of an afternoon out here, and uh, Michigan's offense now will be really under pressure to get something going. Who's ready for the snap? He takes it on the option play, heads down the line of scrimmage, pitches back to Taylor on the right side of the 20. He's got blocking out from the 15 to 10 to 5. Touchdown, Michigan! They're mobbing Billy Taylor. This place has gone hog wild. The Michigan bench is screaming. They are throwing helmets. They are jumping up and down. Billy Taylor has been mobbed in the end zone as one they needed him. The greatest rusher that Michigan has ever known delivered. And I'll tell you, he had some guys out in front of him knocking people down. I have never seen this place so wild. Even the day that they beat Ohio State when nobody expected them to. The clock shows 2.07 remaining in this ball game. Now they're trying to restore some semblance of order here for Dana Coyne to kick the extra point, a most important extra point at that.